night to make wrong.
24 of the Township of Washington Township Council. Adequate notice of the meeting was given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act by the Township Clerk to at least two newspapers. In January, and this meeting has been posted on the Township Bulletin Board, Electronic Message Board, and WCTV, and on the Township website. Please notify the Municipal Clerk for any disability requirements necessary for attendance at Mayor and Council meetings. The fire exits are located through the double doors to your right and through the door on your left. Please silence all cell phones. Could everyone please stand for a salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with justice and justice for all. I missed that one. <laughs> That's all right. I'm oh, like, wait a minute, somebody's throwing this up here. <laughs> Maybe they change it. Then. Roll call. <laughs> Councilman Cassio. Here. Councilman Sears. Here. Councilman Allman. Here. Councilman Velez. Here. Council President Tassel. Here. Let the record reflect also in attendance Mayor Peter Calamari, Township Administrator Mark DiCarlo, Township Attorney Ken Pollard via Zoom, and Township Clerk Susan Wachowski. And CFO. And CFO John Corcoran. Yes. Sorry, John, they didn't list you. I didn't list you, John. Sorry. This was a regular meeting schedule. Sorry. <laughs> Payment of bills, resolution number 24-207, authorized payment of bills March 15, 2024 to March 28, 2024. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I just have one question. Um, the way the ordinance is written and the way we handle it, or do we have the ability to pull one line or one bill? Or yes. We do. Mike, you said that? Yes, we can, we can not send out a check. That is correct. Okay. What, what line are you talking about? No, I just wanted to make sure uh, for future. Um, and in terms of the historical ordinances that we're utilizing, and uh, uh, I don't want to say burning up, but uh, utilizing for expenses. Do we have a prospective schedule or do we address it as the expenses come up? I'm sorry, I just, I don't understand what you mean by prospective schedule. So uh, I'm looking at page one of four. Yes. Resolution 2407. Uh, Maybe uh, 10 lines down, we are expensing or charging a capital ordinance 12-13. Uh, uh, it's for Memorial Field drainage. Yes. So I'm assuming because there's further expenses that are charged to current that we've exhausted this uh, ordinance, but there there are possibly other ones, and there are other ones further down the list that may have uh, monies available. And I'm just trying to understand: is there a plan in place to deplete those, or are we addressing it as the bills come up? I always hate to give you a wishy-washy answer, but it's it's somewhere in the middle. So, for example, this specific per, um, expense, we were having significant drainage problems at Memorial Field, and we were just essentially wasting our money by replenishing the mulch and not addressing the under the uh, you know the the root problem there. So when we got a contractor out and they gave us a uh, quote, we were looking to see what funds were available to pay for it that year meaning 2023 so um so one, mr de Carlo, was this a 2023 capital project no so how did this project come to fruition did the council approve this project during 2023 well we utilized funds that were already approved that's why I'm, that's how i'm trying to answer your question so, so i'm saying who authorized the project what what council authorized the project? That's what I'm just, I'd like to have an answer. Last year's council. Authorized. Did authorize, okay, that's yeah. all I need. That's why I said, that's why I asked, did the 2023 sitting council authorize this project? 
Well, you asked time. me if it was a capital project last year, and the the true answer, or the accurate answer, is no. So how did so where did the funding source come for this project when it was authorized? Well, that's what I was trying to answer, Mr. Holman's question. And the, the answer is right there. If you look at MRC Inc. from Memorial Field, it tells you all the other lines that were utilized to make up the amount of what the the uh, contract was. So I think it was fifty four, fifty six thousand dollars. So before the contract was awarded to the contractor, it was brought before the council, and the council was told it was going to be taken from all these lines. Okay, that's that's all. I just wanted to be clear. So, understanding that process, uh, if there are ordinances, unexpended ordinances, um, would we know in advance of what you, that you plan on expending them uh, on a particular item or a particular line? It's not that you wouldn't or you would. I guess it depends on the expense. So. You know, if a several hundred dollar engineering bill comes in, that can be associated to a funded, an older funded capital ordinance. You know, we're not going to seek your approval until it comes to the bill list. Something that's a significant purchase, like the the drainage corrections to Memorial Field, that were again fifty four, fifty six thousand dollars. Of course, we're going to bring that before the council prior to uh, incurring the expense. I'm sorry, there was just one other line. Um, the Scott Packs, would that be the same that there is uh, further down that line, uh, further down on that front first page? Yes. All right. And was that part of their the capital or, uh, capital plan last year? They asked for it. However, we had pre-existing um, funds already approved for the purchase of Scott Tax, so we didn't put it into the capital to ask for additional money. So they submitted the request. Yes. Okay. No further questions. Thank you. Any other further questions? Thank you, Mr. Carter. You're welcome, sir. Roll call. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Councilman Velez. Yes. Council President to seven. Yes. PSA for April 8, 2024, the Township's second annual Spring into Wellness 5K Run Walk and Health Fair will be taking place on Saturday, April 27th. Please visit our website for further information and sponsorship and application. The Township of Washington launched a Hometown Heroes Banner program as a living tribute for our community to honor past and present members of the armed forces. Please visit our website for further information. 2024 animal license renewals were mailed out in late December. Please note that $25 late fee will begin on March 1st. New Jersey counties, in partnership with the Department of State, Department Division of Elec Elections, are actively seeking residents to serve as poll workers for the upcoming primary and general election. Please visit our homepage to learn more about this event. The township is seeking members for the advisory board of health and a public affairs director. If you are interested, please contact the mayor via email at mayor at twpofwashington.us. Street sweeping will take place the week of April 8, 2024. Please make every effort to remove your vehicles from the street to allow for better cleaning. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. As a reminder, our cable channels are 77 on optimum, in the township and Westwood only. The next special council meeting will be held on Monday, April 15th at 7 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Report of the administrator. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Uh, there was no formal written response from last uh, month's meeting because there was no follow-up required for any resident questions or council. However, after the meeting, uh, Mayor Calamari did ask me to follow up on that 2019 Ford from DPW that we've lost use of. Oh, okay. it's been with, yes. with Ford. 
So I, I found out that it's a 2019 Ford F550. We received it in January of 2020 and did receive two full years of use for it. It broke down in early 2023 and hasn't been returned to us repaired yet because they needed parts. On March 26, we conducted a follow-up and we were told that the engine is due to come in April 3rd and is due to be returned to us this week on April 12th. When I asked the superintendent DPW to try and find an update today, of course, he was unable to get a hold of anybody. However, once we receive um, the vehicle back, I will be following up the appropriate person regarding any compensation from loss of use. And that vehicle had a plow, salt, and we used it to brine. It also had two, two dump bodies for small loads of mulch. Um, so it was a very useful vehicle while we had it. So I will be following up on that. Just to give you an update on some of the projects around town, uh, we're happy to say Memorial Field and Gardner Field Playground um, repair has been um, completed. However, the playground at Memorial Field is still out of use. We have it um, kind of fenced off with that um, disposable fence stuff um, because there's only gravel there. There's no mulch. We're having a very hard time getting a mulching company to come in in a reasonable amount of time. The company that was going to come and do Clark, Gardner, and Memorial is telling us May 20th. So we've been searching around for someone that can obviously get us to mulch a lot sooner so we can get that playground up and running. Gardner is open, but it needs a few inches of uh, mulch. As far as the 23 road program, I did speak Mr. with- Depart Excuse me, Mr. Yeah. Depart Jeff finds that the missing mulch is acceptable, that we can open the playground? For Gardner, not Memorial. Okay. Yes. But Chip is okay with the few inches of missing mulch at Gardner. Well, we didn't specific, specifically speak to Gardner, but based on our superintendent's knowledge of what's He's required, okay. Okay. we have a, enough fine. mulch. Uh, 23 Road Program, I followed up with the owner of DNL Paving, and we are scheduled for April 25th and 26th. I have a meeting with the engineers from Boswell this week. Uh, to discuss some of the punch list items that were held over from last season, uh, some of which are on beach and one on Clark, which is a water problem they'll be addressing. The commuter lot, I met with several residents that had landscaping uh, requests and concerns last week. The final landscaping plan is due to be sent from Boswell to myself and uh, the contractor. And as soon as that, the contractor will be able to start the landscaping and paving and um, definitely is hopes to be done by the end of April and uh, hopefully a lot sooner, but Mother Nature might have some input on that because we're scheduled, I think, for three days of rain this the end of this week. And at PAC and g if you're driving around town, I'm happy to say we're doing pretty well um, with the resurfacing from all the trench work and replacement of pipes that they did uh, last year. They're, they're staying on schedule, even with the rain we had the last week or two. And that concludes my updates, Council President. Thank you. Can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, did somebody have a question? Then? Oh, I thought Tom did. No. Um, just is our township engineer reviewing the repaving? For the PC and G? Yes. yes. Okay. And the only reason I ask is, uh, outside in the parking lot, just as I was walking in, that uh, the scene, mm -hmm. it just seems it's not, um, it doesn't seem to be tight. The scene doesn't appear to be tight. Uh, I don't know if there's, you know, a concern we're coming out of winter, so not an issue today, but, you know, if it remains open, uh, you know, could there be intrusion of water and uh, like a freeze thaw? So just wondering if it's uh, to standard. Okay, I'll follow up with the engineer. Thank you. Anything else for the Mr. Mayor, report of the mayor. Thank you. Good evening, council members, members of the public. Um, I'd like to start by deviating from my usual monthly report to read a post I put on my Facebook page. It is truly disheartening to see the work of the green team and its dedicated volunteers destroyed by someone or some people. These senseless actions have been left, have left many hardworking members of the team feeling demoralized. I feel that time will eventually heal their spirits, but it is important to remember that it is far easier to destroy than it is to create. 
In an effort to support the green team, I will be making a personal donation of $200 to aid in the reconstruction of the area. I encourage others to contribute whatever they can to show their support as well. Once a date is set for the reconstruction, I hope to see a strong turnout from the public to lend a hand and demonstrate their backing for the team. Remember, many hands make light work. To the individuals responsible for the damage, I extend an invitation to join us on the day of reconstruction. You don't need to reveal your identities, but witnessing the community coming together to rebuild will surely be a more fulfilling experience than the act of destruction. Let's turn this negative event into a positive opportunity for unity and growth. That concludes my Facebook statement. For those of you who are not aware, an act of vandalism took place last week on the path off of Cleveland Ave, where the Green Team and many volunteers put in a lot of time and effort to beautify the areas near the bridge. I now have two pieces of good news to offset that act of destruction. First, I would like to share with you a recent email I received from a resident. On behalf of Happy Tales Animal Rescue, I am writing to you to inquire about making a memorial donation of a tree or bench, or possibly both, someplace in Washington Township for a longtime resident of Colonial Boulevard, Dolores Socha, who recently passed away. Dolores was one of the Happy Tales volunteers for over 20 years, and Happy Tales would love to honor Doris's service with a memorial to her and her love of animals. Does our town have a memorial plaque type of program? And if so, can you provide me with details on how we can go about this? My name is Dory Stwo, and also a township resident on Colonial Boulevard and a Happy Tales volunteer for eight years. I am the point person on the project. Happy Tales will pay for all costs in Dolores' name. That ends her email. In brainstorming with her, we decided that a tree will be planted at Martini Senior Park. We also received a request from a resident who would like to stay anonymous. The resident has donated two scoreboards at our new bocce ball court in honor of Cynthia Clark and John Ruter Shan. I hope I pronounced that correctly. The actions of these fine people will always win out and will be remembered over the misguided actions of a minority of people. Now onto my usual report. Police Department news. The department appeared before the New Jersey State Association Chiefs of Police Accreditation Board for the final accreditation hearing and was unanimously approved for accreditation on March 14th. I would like to congratulate the entire department on their successful efforts. The promotion process to fill the rank of lieutenant was conducted. Sergeant Michael Glock was chosen for recommendation to advance to the rank of lieutenant. Officers participated in a Coffee with the Cop event at the Township Library on March 10th. The department handled crowd control for the Ramadan event on March 9th. Traffic control was not needed since the event was held indoors at the Senior Center. Recreation news. The 2023-2024 basketball season ended on an extremely high note. There were four of 10 travel teams that won championships in their respective divisions in the Bergen Travel Basketball League. I would like to congratulate the coaches and participants of the following teams in no particular order. The girls' fourth grade Navy Division champions, the girls' fifth grade Air Force Division champions, the girls' seventh grade Army Division champions, and the boys' fourth grade Air Force West Division champions. The 2024 Summer Recreation Camp registration open to Township of Washington residents only from Friday, April 5th to Friday, April 12th. Registration for the program will end on Saturday, June 1st. The program is accepting up to 600 children this year. <clears throat> the lacrosse program has started its 2024 season. Thank you to all who volunteer to help this season. Good luck to all of our teams. The Fun With Art program spring session has started. The registrants had fun with an Easter theme drawing in their first class. The 2024 men's over 33 softball program registration is open now through Friday, April 12th. Please visit the town website for more details on this and all the programs the township is offering. Fire department news. For the month of March, the department responded to multiple fire and CO alarms, as well as a few calls reporting odors of natural gas. One call to the parkway for a reported vehicle fire turned out to be false. 
two mutual aid calls for working house fires, one to Saddle River on March 3rd and the other on March 23rd to Paramus for a working fire. The department also went to Oradell for a standby while there was a house fire. On March 15th, the department was dispatched to the shopping center for a person locked in the bathroom. The deputy chief was able to free the party with little to no damage. The siren has been mounted and is fully operational in its new position at the department monument area. The department will also reconnect the one at town hall within the next two weeks. The department is, holding, is hosting a Texas Hold'em event as a fundraiser on April 26th. Please check the department's website for further information. DPW news. The department assisted with the installation of a new swing and border at the Gardner Field Playground. They also helped with the removal of old mulch, mulch and the installation of drainage at the Memorial Field Playground. New mulch will be installed at a later time. They began weekly painting of the lacrosse field at Memorial Field. They prepared the parks and baseball fields for spring. They took down and removed a dead tree at Seniors Park and also removed a tree from Cross Street that had fallen due to high winds on March 11th. Municipal stormwater outfalls have been inspected in addition to catch basins in zones one and two. Sewers were inspected in zone one. The next scheduled metal, collect metal collection date is April 11th. Library, it was a successorific March with lots of school visits and programs. The spring session is being extended to the end of April as we expect our entrance renovation to begin in May. In addition to online and in building notices, a special newsletter will be sent out to residents that will answer all questions regarding services and hours once the contractor has confirmed their dates. Municipal Alliance News. A program on vaping was funded at the high school featuring motivational speaker Tim Schumacher on Monday, March 18th. The transition from paper documents to the state digital mag system is underway. Code enforcement. Our code enforcement official keeps busy ensuring that the properties in town are in compliance with the town codes. If you would like the office to look into an issue, please call 201-664-4404 or send an email to admin sec, that's admin sec, at twpofwashington.us. Zoning office. The zoning officer reviewed and processed 32 zoning applications last month. Planning board. The board continues its review of the town master plan to keep our town as residential in nature as possible. Budget and salaries. The budget process has been going well. However, I believe I should inform the council and the public about a recent event that took place. We had a good employee leave us last week. Although I chose not to ask the employee the reason, I believe the timing was in part due to the discussion about and the actual issuing of rice notice. The employee got a job in a similar position in a local municipality, earning more than 20% than she was in her job here. I hope while starting the discussion of the salaries, the council keeps in mind that our employees are our most important asset. We should all keep in mind how difficult it is to find and retain talented employees. I would not like to go back to the days of when the township was a revolving door for employees coming and going. I know we currently, we currently and finally have some of the best employees in municipal government. As demonstrated in the above example, we are far from paying our employees a top rate for the work product they deliver. But let's continue to pay each and every one of them the compensation they earn and deserve. Thank you, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Report of the council, Ms. Wise. Sure, thank you. All right, so um, March was a busy month. Um, the week of March 14th, I had the pleasure of reading at Washington School for their Dr. Seuss week. Um, thank you to the Washington School for welcoming me and hosting such a nice week. It was nice to read to our little residents and watch them engaged in such an important part of the learning process. Um, on the weekend of March 9th and 10th, the township residents welcomed Ramadan. Thank you for that invitation. That Sunday, the library hosted the Irish dancers in celebration of St. Patrick's Day. Um, the library has so much to offer. I really hope our residents are taking advantage of everything they have. 
Uh, this weekend alone, the library offered eclipse glass, solar eclipse glasses for our residents. So I really appreciate them taking the time to put that together for our residents. Uh, let's see. Councilman Sears and I have been working hard to get the Hometown Heroes Banner program up and running. Uh, we definitely owe a big thank you to the administration, to Heather Henry and to Renata for their unwavering support of this project. There are so many different moving parts and I believe we have 20 to 20, 22 banners. So we've got the, the green to go and we're ready to print. So we will have those up for Memorial Day to Veterans Day. So thank you to everybody that's been involved in making that possible. Um, the, as mentioned in the PSA, the 5K and health fair will take place on April 27th. The run walk kicks off at 9 a.m. and the health fair will start at 8 a.m. There is still time to register to be a part of this amazing community event, both as a runner, walker, and a sponsor. Uh, we are still actively looking for sponsorship as well as vendors and volunteers. We cannot do it without volunteers. The, all the information of, is available on the website, so please visit our website for links to the registration, to the sponsorship, to the health mm -hmm. fair, and to the volunteer sign up. So please find the time to get out there, join us. It's going to be a great uh, event. Um, on March 30th, I just want to say congratulations to the fire department for their Easter egg hunt. That was a whole bunch of fun. Um, watching Councilman Sears <laughs> put out all the eggs for the kids. Um, thank you to the mayor for standing in the cold with me. And uh, to so many of the kids and the parents, um, thank you to the, the fire department for really volunteering your time to bring this to our, our little ones and the parents. I know we all appreciate it. Um, let's see, where are we? to the basketball teams. We are blessed to have such amazing kids. I just feel like we keep celebrating so many of our young residents. Uh, so congratulations to the basketball team, four, sorry, the four travel basketball teams. I think we need to put our heads together and find a way to recognize all these kids in a collective space. And thank you to the volunteers who take the time to um, train our kids and practice with them. I know that that takes time out of your own personal schedule. So thank you to those volunteers. Um, and then the green team, I just want to, you know, I guess apologize on behalf of those folks that did this vandalism. You know, my daughter and I were there putting it together with the green team, with councilman here. I know you take so much pride into all that and to just, see what happened. Um, I apologize that, that that's even a thing in our community. But when the time comes, you know, I'll be there. And my daughter, we're ready to, you know, put the gloves on and our bags and Thank you. whatever you need from us. Um, and then last but not least, um, I just want to talk about the budget for a second. The I feel the budget has been Overall, I'm very pleased with the progress of the budget. Uh, I feel we have as a council come up with some very reasonable compromises. However, I do want to um, address the rice notice. I strongly am opposed to this procedure. I don't think it's necessary. Um, in speaking with some of our employees, just you know, casual conversation, some have endured some unneeded stress as a result of this, um, especially those that, that just give so much of their time and energy to make our town function. Um, they are the front line. And it's unfortunate that we have to you know, bring some of them up for question um, and put them under this, un unneeded, this unneeded stress. Um, they are the ones that are between us and the residents. They work day in and day out to, to make sure that the residents are getting their needs, their questions answered. So while I, not, I do not agree with this rice notice, I will tell our employees that I'm here for you and I will stand and I will fight because I luckily 
have been have had the pleasure of working with so many of you while I was Director of Public Affairs, and I saw what you brought to the table, and I appreciate everything that you did for me, for the community. So I will sit here in open and in closed, fighting for your on your behalf. So I hope that Council really considers the importance of our employees, because right now, as the mayor said, it's hard to find good, honest, hardworking employees. So let's recognize and show them that we appreciate them. And that is my report. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Sears. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I just want to tailor on Councilwoman Velez's comments on the right, rice notice. I think it's um, a sad day when we cannot trust the employees that are running this town. If you take some time and sit in the buildings department or you sit and talk to the people that are working upstairs, you spend an hour in uh, uh, the clerk's office, it's endless. It never stops. They always have a positive attitude. They are always well respected. They go out of their way to help people. Uh, and just some quick comments. On the weekend, when I see a problem, I will call or text one of the code officials. They will get back to me. If I have a question uh, about something in the planning or zoning board, I get an answer. I don't understand the rights notice of, of such great employees. But again, like Ms. Filet says, we are behind you 100%. There are people that are watching these rice notices in the public. So we are behind you. And I will go on to my report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to follow up on the hometown heroes uh, report, we do have 22 members. Uh, we will have them up for Memorial Day. The, uh, the residents that sent in pictures to be digitalized uh, Heather Hendry did an outstanding job on getting those pictures corrected. And I have copies of the pictures that uh, the residents uh, presented to me. I will get them back to them. Just reach out to me and I will get you the pictures that uh, uh, you had digitalized uh, uh, for the banners. Great, great day. Um, on the grants, I applied for the uh, county mini grant for our May 4th Clarkfield cleanup. That grant was accepted. Um, and usually it's, it's about anywhere from 375 to 400. You know, once we complete the project, I have to submit the form. Uh, I am working with Easy Ride on the process of getting a charging station, uh, working through public service gas and electric. I have a, a call with them tomorrow to uh, see where we are in the process and where we plan it should be placed for the benefit of you know the community. So we will. I'll keep uh, you guys abreast on where we are with that. Uh, Montclair State. I had a uh, conference call with the five graduate students and the professor to overlook our waterway project. Hopefully, they will start that within a month and we'll move on with that. Uh, the uh, April 13th, we will be handing out seedlings down at the Bethany Community Center. Uh, we also have the e-recycling uh, shredding going on down there. Uh, we're asking everybody to, if you have old cell phones, drop them off to the green team. The um, Resale value of those are quite high right now. I think because there's gold and metals and precious in it that they want. And we're also going to be collecting clear plastic bags for the library to support them in getting their their benches and their chairs to track. So that will be on April the 13th. On April the 20th, we'll be down at Bethany Community Center again. We will be handing out seedlings and we're asking to collect cell phones and plastic bags. And again, on April the 27th is the 5K Running Health Day. We have vendors coming in. Uh, it, it's going to be a great day. So you know, please come down to support that. Uh, student recognition. Uh, we did recognize a lot of the um, basketball, but 
for the first time in Westwood Regional uh, um, history, I was told, the New Jersey Academic Decathlon Westwood Regional High School was the state champs, and they are going to Pittsburgh. So congratulations to that whole team. I don't have all the names of the students that are involved, but I will find out. Maybe, uh, Mr. Mayor, we can post them on the web, and congratulations. But uh, again, terrific students, outstanding uh, uh, results coming out of the school system in Washington Township. So uh, I'm sure we're all very proud of, of these students. Uh, the overnight uh, parking for the re first responders, uh, it was presented to the uh, town attorney. The town attorney re reviewed it. We should be getting a uh, ordinance written for it shortly. Uh, the stickers are made up. I have them here. Oh, nice. All right. They will, uh, there's a set of rules and regulations that they have to follow to be placed on the car. And uh, the rule, rules and regulations will be in the ordinance. So when that's ready to go. That ordinance, Mr. Sears? Excuse me? Mr. Pollard, when do we expect that ordinance? Uh, I have it ready. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, good. Okay. Now to the darker side. Uh, could the uh, TV guy put the first picture up on the screen? I don't know if the rest of the council can see it. What you are looking at is the final result of 300 hours of volunteer work, 60 hours of DPW assistance, Girl Scouts, Scouts, the soccer team, Westwood soccer team, council members, parents, students. This was totally completed. That was one side of the bridge. And then on the other side of the bridge, it almost mirrors uh, itself. There's a, a bird bath, there's Belgium stones that were donated. Special plants were installed on both sides. Can you go to the next slide, please? This is today's results. Stripped down, thrown into the river, bird bath crushed, thrown into the river. Could you show the next three pictures, please? There's a the bird bath crushed in the river with the Belgium stones thrown on top of it. That is plastic and EPS styrofoam that is now polluting that, that, that brook going into the lake. The stones were all ripped up, thrown into the, uh, the brook. The uh, bird bath was on a four inch concrete uh, uh, boulder, uh, 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 tube. It was ripped out, crushed and thrown in. You're looking over a over a thousand dollars worth of damage. This is beyond disgusting for our town, for us to even have this done. The green team is so, uh, we're so disgusted at this that the green team is offering a $500 reward for the name of the persons or persons that did this. We will ask full and total police response in this. We want the fullest amount of punishment that can go to the people that did this. Not only did they destroy something with, with so many people put so much love into this, the chemicals coming out of that bird bath, the EPS styrofoam and the plastic. I made a call to the Environmental Protection Agency today. I, I explained to them what would happen. I mean, what has happened, and they agree that if we find a person, they will get involved with issuing a, a summons to them. So my word to the people that did this, you may be looking at $1,000 or more, but your legal fees will be way over $5,000 if the state gets involved. I cannot say how disheartening this community, I personally received over 50 calls, text messages, phone calls, emails, with people totally disgusted over what has happened here by the bridge. Um, and I hate to end on a negative thing here, but we need to solve this problem and it needs to end. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Mr. Sears. Mr. Allman? Uh, 
following those reports. So, uh, <laughs> I don't think I have much. Just uh, Tom, appreciate the follow up on the charging. Yeah. I think it's important uh, that we have that in town. So greatly appreciate that. We just need to, uh, if we can come up where we feel a location that would assist me on getting the um, the quote on how much it would cost. Okay. Maybe we can brainstorm something. Certainly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Mr. Casca? Yeah, sure. Uh, really no report tonight, but I just want to um, reiterate about the rice notice to the employees. The rice notice protects both the employees and the council and governing body and talking about uh, them and their positions. It is no way in flip or um, what's what I'm looking for. Uh, intimidating. Well, no, it, it should not. It's, it's not an intimidating process. OK, though they might think it is. It's to protect all parties involved. And I understand there's a lack of understanding of the particular um, statute, but it was put in place for the, for the employee's benefit, no one else's benefit, and the township as well. So um, if the employees take it that way, I'm sorry, but they, they obviously don't have an understanding of it as well, as well as some council members on the dais. And that's my comment. Thank you, Mr. Cassio. Um, my report is short. Uh, I'd like to thank the police department on getting their credit. Be thankful they got their accreditation. It's uh, glad to see that. Congratulations to Lieutenant Glock on his promotion. On March 14th, I also got to read to the students at Jesse George School, and I picked the eclipse. So the yes. perfect today is the day of the eclipse. So they unfortunately I didn't have enough glasses to give out that day, but I hope they got some. Um, the rice notices are not meant in a ne any negative criteria other than the legal requirement for us to notify them that we're talking about their position. That are all about. Um, thank you for all your work, Mr. Velez, and Ms. Velez, and Mr. Sears, and all the other people behind the scenes on the Hometown Heroes. Congratulations to the decathlon team at Westwood Regional High School. And also on Saturday, April 20th, Washington Township Baseball Softball will be hosting uh, its opening day ceremonies. Uh, the 600 children in the program approximately should be marching on the field with the hundreds of coaching volunteers. Hope to see everybody on the dais and in the audience there. Be lots of uh, giveaways and food and beverages. That's all I have, thank you. How many teams do we have this year? There are, there's over 30 something teams. Wow. It's wow. a great program they're doing. They're wow. doing. Last year they had such a, an amazing. Yeah, okay. there's 30 teams. There's I think there's there's more than that. I, I'm, <laughs> I just left practice before I got here. No, very good. Very there's good. a lot of teams. So thank you to the board and all the volunteers that make it happen because right. without them it wouldn't happen. Uh, general public comment. Limit to five minutes. Do I have a motion to open the for the public comment? So move. So move. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Would anybody in the audience like to come up and address the council at this time? Good evening. Good evening, council members. My name is Stephen Kalish, live in Washington Township. I just want to follow up on something uh, uh, Mr. Sears uh, brought up, Councilman Sears brought up. Uh, the council and mayor have done a really outstanding job recognizing our outstanding athletic teams uh, in the past in this town. And I, I would encourage you to have the same response for our academic decathlon team. There's, there's a terrific article in the PASCAC Press this week, if you haven't seen it, about this team. Uh, I'm familiar with Akadeka. One of my kids, you know, 10, 15 years ago was in uh, Akadeka. It's an interesting uh, activity. And they take 18 kids, nine are starters, nine are alternates, and they have these meets where the kids, on their free time, are taking tests. They're, they're taking a, a, an actual academic test. They're participating in an interview. They actually get interviewed like you go to a, a job interview. They get formally interviewed. Uh, in other words, they all have to get dressed up in suits and, and so forth. They have to give a speech, and they're graded for all of these different things. There's also a super quiz at the end, which is kind of a fun, competitive thing that goes on. Uh, this group of kids this year, uh, 
has done something unbelievable. They're the state champions. So uh, Westwood Regional High School are the state champions in the academic decathlon. So I hope that the council and mayor can, uh, one of the future meetings before the school year ends, can formally recognize this team and let's treat them the way we treat the athletic teams in this town. Uh, they're an outstanding group of kids. They're led by a uh, math teacher, uh, James Thomas, and the high school has been doing this for years. You can look at a picture in the, in the article of all the uh, sequential awards that they've won over the year and this is the ultimate one becoming state champions and we hope they do great at the national uh, but they're represented this town terrifically and they should be recognized so thank you thank you mr Kalish. would anybody else in the audience like to come on yes mr speed just real quick yes mr. Uh, i also want to recognize councilman cassio and and Council Hello, President DeSanto, because you guys did recognize the wrestling team and you recognized uh, another sport. So, you know, we are. We are going to do yeah. something. It just, we just found out this week, Mr. Kent. Yeah. So yeah, it's, that, it's on the agenda. <laughs> yeah. yeah I just I'm sure the, mayor, the, the mayor and I will, will get get together and get the information. We just found out about it this week. Yeah. So. That, that being said, we're proud of war. Absolutely. Yeah, everybody, everybody. Both academically yeah. and. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, these. these it's, it's students amazing. are amazing in this township, you know, amazing. So well, the, the best thing I ever did is buy my house where it is because I get to see the kids walk by high school as freshmen and leave as seniors, and there's so much growth. <laughs> it's the best thing I ever did. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so satisfying. So mm -hmm. they're all, all good kids. Sometimes do bad things, but they're all good kids. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Sabino. Okay. Th thank you, uh, Council President, Mayor, Council President, and Council Members. As you are aware, I am the chairman of the planning Maybe board. Can you just state your name? Oh, I'm sorry. I know. We'll I, you I, 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 I apologize. Lenny Sabino. I should have called you by your name. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Do I, get, do I get a minute back, Susan? I just started to go. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, Mayor, council president, and council members. As you are aware, I am the chairman of the planning board and have served on this board for about 15 years, the last year and a half as chairman. Over the last 15 years, I would need to use the fingers on both my hands and maybe my toes to count the number of admins that have served the board. And it is due to this revolving door around the board admin position that on occasion, things fell through the cracks. For example, board, member, board minutes not being prepared on a timely basis or not being prepared at all. Receiving planning board applications and agendas right before a meeting, and we cannot forget the automatic approval of the Gorga Place subdivision application. Finally, over the past three years, the planning board has stability in, in the board admin position. Tonight, I'm here to support Grace Kalish, our current planning board admin. I learned last week that, that Grace was served with a rice notice. I was shocked to say the least. Grace is one of the hardest and most you know, Grace has one of the hardest and most stressful positions in this town's administration. Mark, you work hard too. <laughs> Besides her position on the planning board, she is also the admin for the zoning board. The seamless functioning of these two boards is dependent upon Grace properly executing her role and responsibilities. And she does it very well. Just spend one day in her office, maybe even a couple of hours, and you will witness firsthand all the activities that Grace needs to manage, the numerous phone calls from applicants, contractors, real estate agents, and the deluge of application docu documents that have to be sorted and sent to board members in advance of a board meeting. And on occasion, there, there are some that get a little spirited with Grace. And in those cases, I tell Grace to have them call me. I will take care of it. Hi, Grace. <laughs> okay. Lastly, since Grace took over as the planning board admin about three years ago, our meeting minutes from years past, and I mean years ago, are finally documented and up to date. Current meeting minutes are prepared right after the meeting and presented to the planning board members at the following meeting for review and approval. Meeting agendas and documents are timely delivered to the planning board prior to the meeting, so they can be reviewed for hearing and application. In closing, Instead of reviewing and challenging the appropriateness of Grace's salary and position, the council should be giving her a pay raise in the next budget. I strongly believe that her salary is not equitable with the value she, she is providing the boards 
and to this town and to all she interacts with on a daily basis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. So I, I just want to set the record straight. I've worked with Ms. Kalish for the last two years, and just to uh, give her the praise that you just gave her, that I would like to give when she comes up, I don't know how this whole rights thing is becoming a, a, a negative thing. We cannot physically give her the accolades she likes, and I agree 100% with every accolade you gave her. And I would have given them to her, I'm going to give them to her when it's her time. But we've made this such a negative thing. Legally, we have to rights notice our employees to discuss anything about them, whether it is good or it is bad. Promotions, you get rights noticed. Demotions, you get rights noticed. Yes, so it has both. But this, all we're doing is following the letter of the law. The previous council last year rights noticed people. They didn't get this negativity. Nobody up here has said anything that this is going down a negative path. And I just want to set the record straight on this day for me. I am rights noticing the employees as the law states for the state of New Jersey to discuss their employment. Right? It is not whether we discuss it in a positive way or a negative way. It, they need to be raised. Council President, yes, yeah, I just want to add some clarity as to why. Um, so I don't know where this whole negative aura came well, and these emails that I've seen going around town hall setting this defense up that we're going after the employees. In my heart, there is nothing. Uh, pers I'm not trying to persecute anybody at town hall. I just want to have the free ability to, to give Mrs. Kalish her, her accolades, right? But if I don't rice her, I can't do that legally. See, I'm, so, see, so, I'm, I'm under, a, I'm confused as well, because I would love to be corrected, but what no, I No, that's heard, the law. I, I've, well, called, I, I've, called, I've called the League of Municipalities. Mr. Mr. Pollard has, made, has, has given us guidance. I've been through promotions. I've been through demotions with people in my staff in the state. And that's how the law works. And there was never, there was never any ill intent of us rights noticing people, Mr. Pollard. I just, can I just, I just want to add why this might be. What I understood Mr. Pollard say is that the law went through a few revisions over the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years. But the way it stands now, a rights notice is required when there is an adverse job action. That's, that's not true. why everybody's upset. No. But that's that's what I understood. That is not true. Okay, can, I do, can I just jump in here a little bit? Uh, I mean, I, I hear a lot of people interpreting what it is. I thought I went through this pretty clearly last time. What I basically said was, if you want to discuss employees in a closed session, you have to give the employee the right to say, I do not want you to discuss it in closed session. I want you to discuss it in open session, in public. If you're going to discuss it in public, you do not have to have a rice notice. So I, I just want everybody to be clear about that. There's nothing, there's nothing that says you have to have a rice notice if you're going to be discussing uh, a position in public. But then why in the past have we stopped talking about I, I, I went through this last time, and, and, and I'll go through it again. So there was a case that came out that talked about giving rice notices Whenever there was any, whenever there was any action being taken, it was on the agenda. The Keene case, but it went up. To, I told you, it went up to the Supreme Court. It got reversed. Okay. Okay. And I, and I went through this last time. I'll try and go. You know, I'm, I'm telling you again. Basically, the rice notice is used to protect an employee so that a public body cannot discuss their employment behind closed doors and gives the employee the right to bring it into the open and to have the discussion about them in open. Now, when people get rights notices, they may get uh, uh, concerned over it uh, because basically what you're saying to them is, we're going to be discussing you in private. That could cause people concern. So that's the rights notice uh, situation is that they have a right to say, that you have to do it in public. Okay. okay. Mr. Pollard, can I, uh, just a point to clarity or to further emphasize, the ability to go into closed sessions, one of them is for personnel, correct? Correct. So if we were to speak about a position and the person who holds it, by default, 
it goes into closed. Is is that a fair statement? No, no, no. It doesn't go default. There's no default about it. it you have to you have to set you have to pass a resolution. You're going into closed, and you're going to dis- if you want to discuss something, you closed. And the rice notice basically says if you intend to talk about somebody in closed, you have to give them a rice notice first. So that they could say, I do not want you to be discussing me in closed. I want you to discuss me in open. But we we can't make that determination. As a as a council, we can't make the determination to have the discussion in public because it's an employee right. No, no. I, I, I don't know where this is coming from. Except, 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 except. Except that it, there was a case that talked about that, but the rice notice is the ability of the employee to take the discussion out of the closed session and into public. Council President, we, by me. Hold on, just let Mr. So, if we wanted to speak about Mr. DeCarlo. <laughs> okay. Uh, and we put that on the agenda about his performance. His, I'm assuming his salary and salary action would be part of that. Yes. Discussion. That that would be a personnel discussion that would go behind closed doors. It doesn't have to go behind closed doors. The employee, if you're going to talk about the employee. And you are going to be talking about him in closed session. He has a right or she has a right to say, I don't want you to have it in closed session. I want you to have it in in public. But as a council, can we elect to have those discussions in public? Yes. We don't have to, we don't have to go into closed to have those. Correct. Discussions. That's correct. But in the past, we've been stopped. Okay, I, I, I don't know how many times I have to go through this about I know, but... in the past, okay? So there was a case that came out from the appellate division that talked about that, and the it was taken up to the Supreme Court, and they reversed that decision. So if you want to talk about a, an employee uh, and you're not going to go into closed, you can talk about it in public. If you want to go into close, you can go into close. And but that's how the rice notice came to be, because the Board of Education went behind closed doors and there was adverse uh, action taken and the protection was given to employees to uh, make the discussions be in public. Mr. Powell, can I ask you a quick question, though, just on the flip side, if, if there's going to be a discussion about an employee in open session, and that employee is not aware of that going to be a discussion. Isn't that where they have that right to have the rice notice? You know, in other words, we give a rice notice to say that there's going to be a discussion, like you said, clearly that it's the employee's right to decide if it's going to be in, in open. All right, they'd rather have it in open. But how does that employee know there's going to be a discussion? And if it's held and they don't know about it, what happens? Do you follow what I'm saying? Well, I, I think I follow what you're saying. You're talking about being aware of things. So yeah, the I mean, if you put a right notice out, there's going to be a discussion no, about. So, so hold on. So, if the yeah. if the council is going, the council now has sent out rice notices to a certain number of employees, right? Right. That's right. Okay. So the 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 agenda. We, we has did not by any. We we decided by the list. We went one third, one third. Okay, one third. and you made it no. public. That the, okay, and you're gonna and and you're gonna you. Or, or having that in public. I mean, you you notify you you said you're going to be having these people come to into uh, uh, be notified. I mean, you notify. Right, they've been notified, yeah. and they have the right to come yeah. back and say they're open or closed. Again, you know, you, you're taking the the wrong approach. The, the 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 rice notice came about from the Open Public Meetings Act. Mm-hmm. Because it gives everything is supposed to be in open except for the exceptions and the exceptions are listed and you have to pass your resolution to go into closed. But if it's going to be a personnel matter in closed, that's when you have to give a rice notice. That's that's 
That's the most I can tell you is that's what a rice notice is. So, so what you're saying is we could discuss any personnel at any time, whether positive or negative, without rice noticing a person, as long as right, right, as long. But it's just the position, not the name, correct? No, no. Well, that's where that's where the whole thing gets thrown out because we what what happened? What my inkling for rice noticing is our new handbook now puts the position with the name. In the past, the position was all by itself. But that's just to us. That's no, not no, no, that's public. public. That's public record. Somebody can open it. It's it's operable. Well, I asked that question, and we were told that this it's is not right. available to anybody. No, the budget's not available to anybody. But that's where it is. Yeah. But, but no, but that but list is not. available. If I, if I if I open that list tomorrow and say, give me all the all the employee um, uh, positions with the name, it's available then. So then you could surmise that this person is this person. So that's what made me say yeah, they, because we can't just say uh, the administrator while he's sitting here. I know I'm picking on Mr. Carl. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then and then say say just say the administrator when he's sitting here as the administrator, like we all know it's Mr. Carl. So the same thing goes with other departments. Like if we talk about a different department, you know exactly who that person is. So if you don't write them and let them know that we're talking about that department, how do they know that they're being talked about? And that that's was basically what I was getting at. That's my whole thing for writing is. But, and just to be clear, okay, well, okay, well, here's here, let me just jump in there. If you want, if you want to do that. That, then send out a, a notice. It's not a rice notice. You could send out notification to anybody you'd like. If you feel that you want to notify employees that they're going to be talked, you know, that their position is going to be talked about at a particular uh, council meeting, well, then send them a little note. But it, it's not a rice notice. But we a did rice... the same rice notice. I, I went through the minutes last year, Mr. Mr. Pollock, and we rice noticed the, the former council rice noticed people last year. For the same reason. The same way to use. I'm sorry, but I don't recall race noticing oh. our employees yeah. last year. No, there has never been a time that I can recall uh, yeah. where the entire employee yeah. bank has yeah. been yeah. rice noticed. Not, not that, not to my recollection. I don't recall any any time any council in the in the history that I've been there has right decided to rice notice the entire employee bank of people. Oh, we did. We did it. We did it two years when I was on council. My first time, we definitely rights noticed everybody two years in a row. We I don't recall that at all. We were given, that was the guidance we were given. Here's the bottom line. It's better to just rights notice them and you protect yourself, whether it's an open or closed. That's yeah. really what we're that's really what we're doing. OK, it's basically a, a general blanket. If we decide to, you know, discuss them in open. We can do so apparently now without any consequences, and we can do the same thing in close. They've been rice noticed, so it's protecting everyone. It's supposed to protect the the right of the employee, okay, and that's what it's there for. All right, but we we're we're still in the public comment period, so let's wrap up. Well, that's no, no, but that's was that that's the genesis of it, and that's why we did it. It's better to be safe than sorry. Than sorry. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's what we and that's what the guidance we've had in the past, Mr. Mm -hmm. Pollard, um, from from you. And that's, you know, that's where we're going to go with it. But yes, Ms. Bless. Councilman Cassio, this is my third budget. The last two years, we have not race noticed our employees. Just I correct. Say, I didn't say we did. Okay. No, two years ago, you did race notice employees. So this is new on my tenure okay. here. That's President, may I make a quick comment? I kind of waited until the end. Um, Matt. Yes. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of confusion about rice notices. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is stressful. Uh, but I'm going to say a majority of the council members ran on a 10% municipal tax cut. I hear from a lot of the employees that the salaries were saved to last because they're concerned that that promise is going to try and be met by salary cuts. And so I hope you understand how this is very stressful time for the employees, putting those two things together. That's fine. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience like to come up and address the council at this time? Anybody in Zoom? Let's see. Any hands? This is us. Just give him a minute. No. Taking Mr. Kalish's advice. You asked me to wait on <laughs> Zoom. Seeing nobody, motion to close the public comment period of the meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.
Ordinances, adoption, second reading. Introduction, first reading. Ordinance number 24-07, an ordinance revising the criteria for LOSAP awards to members of the Township of Washington Volunteer Ambulance Corps. Motion to introduce and pass ordinance number 24-07 at first reading by title. So moved. I'll second it. Roll call. Oh, can I? oh sure, yeah. sorry. Discussion? So I know we had a presentation last week. A couple weeks or ago. Or a couple weeks yes. ago, the last meeting, excuse yes. me. Um, I just, after reviewing this, I just don't see how we're incentivizing uh, activity or, uh, I guess, um, your response because there is between 166 and 190 uh, points available. Mm -hmm. You know, the calls and the uh, assignment to the operating schedule, um, you know, is 90 of them, but there's still a large opportunity to get, you know, significant uh, amount of points without riding without being on the schedule you know i'm just i'm i'm sort of reacting to what the uh, what the stated purpose of the revision was um you know i don't know if i'm reading too much into it or making a wrong interpretation but i just feel that if they want if there needs to be a change and they feel there is we certainly should change it i'm just not sure that this is the correct incentive to get that uh response sure. Sure. i i i asked a similar question like you did during the meeting and i believe the ambulance corps said these revisions would help them either attract or retain members okay. and then we said we'd look at it we'd look at it at the end of the to see if it was working or more revisions were needed that's how i understood it mr yeah, Sears? i believe uh mr greco that was here he was stressing the point that um certain members are taking web classes mm -hmm. and they're generating their credits for the low side instead of responding to calls they're making their credit before the end so this plan is to modify reducing them taking all these web classes and to get them back into the routine of responding to ambulance calls and again he did say that it was a it was a kind of a trial period to see yes. who's helping to retain or attract new members right and, and they we may to have to look at this again for further right. revisions is that Okay, that's fine. Did everybody else get the yeah. same thing out of that? And he said, I believe that other other uh, departments were doing yes, yeah. other towns were doing this. So, any other discussion? Roll call. Okay. Uh, Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Councilwoman Velez. Yes. Council President Sun. Yes. Resolution number 24-208, authorized publication of ordinance number 24-07, and schedule a public hearing. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All, any discussion? Roll call. Hold on one second, I'm sorry. We'll take your time. I was on the wrong line before, I'm sorry. And second was Mr. Sears? Yes. Thank you, I'm sorry. I was on the wrong line before. Okay, just, thank you. Right, sorry about that. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Councilman Blaise. Yes. Council President Desan. Yes. Individual resolutions. Resolution number 24-209. Authorize an emergent appropriation prior to adoption of the 2024 current budget in the amount of $3,989,347.35. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, discussion? Does this um envision uh, catching up for some of the uh, shortfalls from the initial uh, budget or temporary budget. Uh, so I think we charged uh, some expenses to, for instance, the grant, uh, a grant 
uh, waiting for the budgets to be finalized. So uh, does this uh, accelerate the correction or is this just a straight percentage? Yeah. Well, Councilman, what actually, there's there's two parts. It's the first part is basically this is necessary to get us to the point where we adopt the budget for expenses that we'll, we'll have to pay for. Um, and also, um, if, if you look at page six on this report, um, where it mentions the two pension lines, unlike the other accounts, which are basically at different percent of last year's, they, they have to be the full amount because those annual payments are actually due April 1st and you have a 30 day grace period. So they have to be paid by April 30th to avoid any penalties. And division pensions are very strict with, with, with those types of things. So that's that's why if you compare the first temporary budget to the second, that's why the second is a little bit higher because of those two two accounts. They're on page six. A little more than half a little more than half of the down page. Yes. No it's, it's the library contribution and the PERS payment, right? Well, no, no, the two items I'm talking about are the two pension payments uh, for, the, for the 247 and the million eight. They're, they're, because they're due April period, so they're, they're the full amount for the year, which is why it's a little bit higher than the first temporary budget. So it's a 26 point whatever percent plus the pension payments, is that correct? Right, like everything being equal, it, it would be basically a little bit less than uh, double what it was originally. But because of, uh, and the majority of the, of, of the reason for this is because of the two pension accounts. Yeah. There are a few other accounts that I had to make a little bit higher just to cover since we adopt the budget, but dollar wise, this, this rep, those two lines represent probably 90% of that, sure. I would say. And again, this this will get us to the point where, where we won't have any issues fulfilling our obligations until we adopt the budget. So, which, which which is why it's necessary. At this point. To answer your question, no, Councilman. Yes, it will help us expedite that. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? No. Roll call. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Councilman Velez. Yes. Council President DeSena. Yes. Resolutions consent agenda. The following items have been determined to have the unanimous consent of the council and will be enacted in one motion. Should any item require independent consideration, any council member may have such item removed from the consent agenda. Does anyone have anything from the consent agenda to be removed? Resolution number 24-210, authorized refund of recreation registration fees, lacrosse, Kochi, in the amount of not to exceed $130. Resolution number 24-211, authorized refund of use facilities fees, Washington Lake Association, the amount of not to exceed $200. Motion to approve consent agenda resolutions. So moved. Second? Second. Roll call. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Councilman Velez. Yes. Council President DeSena. Yes. Adjournment to conference agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, conference agenda, April 8, 2024. Uh, their administration, we have the DPW building. Um, anything to report tonight, Mr. Mayor? Uh, no, no, again, just uh, leaving it on there. Just Thank to you. Just keep it at the forefront of people's minds. <laughs> when you. are we looking to make a decision on that? I think we'll have to, once the budget's over, then we'll get okay. back into full swing on that. Yeah. Are they? The architect, though, is working on the plan that was discussed yes, to, uh, to go above. Yes. Yes. Okay. So there is act. There's an action being taken, just not on us at the moment. Correct. Okay. Thank you. On the council ordinances of legislation, none financial is the auditor for 2024. Uh, Ms. Wachowski has put a. Um, a sample, uh, I guess, year, advertisement from last year for a new auditor. What's the date on that? The deadline? Uh, I just had it open. And I just I, folded the page. It's, it's we had to go out twice last year. Okay. Because we had one, and then we went out in January, and we went back out. I believe it was in the beginning of March. But this is just a sample of you know the wording and that. If somebody wants to change something, just by all means say so, and we'll do it. Or in your time frame, you want to do this fine. It's going to be for 
2024, so it's not like it's got to be done before. No, it's got to get it. You just got to do it, but at some point before the end of the year. Anybody have any uh, any corrections or? I just I just see the township auditor 2025 correct on the on the pre qualification so it's 2023 still it's gonna be 2024 this 24. is 2024 yes I know okay. so it'll be 2024 yeah and then whenever you you know if you like that we go out with it you tell me the date you want to buy whatever you know meeting dates whatever I think as long as we have it back by June 1st right we'd still be in compliance Mr. Powell or Mr. Corcoran for the auditor as long as we have the auditor for this year in place by June. So oh, you can do it later than we that. Can do it later than that. Oh yeah. No, you know, because twenty four would be would be done in twenty five. Correct. So yeah, yeah they're, they're they're doing the twenty three order now. So it's been so yeah. It's only the year to come out. You you really have until the end of the year. Why don't we just set it to July first? Bring it back. Well, well, Is that okay with everybody? We will bring it back in July. Everybody okay with that, Mr. Alman? Yes. Back on the agenda for July. No, no, we want a deadline. The deadline, the deadline, deadline to July for the next meeting to, right. for us to review the the candidates that submit. All right. So submission by July first. Yep. When is our meeting in July? Uh, July the middle. That's why it'll give us time to it'll give us time to look at it. That's why I picked July. Like the only one meeting. Yeah, There's only one meeting. That's why I'm There's saying you'll have 15 days to look. Everybody July will have it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you'll have like 17 days after it comes in to look at it. July 15th. Yeah, I'm 14 days then. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just, what's the difference between the two? The one was earlier date and the other one was second date. We did it twice. Okay. That's all. Did one get a better response? I believe the second one did. I think we had three candidates. And I'm sure since we did it last year, but is it request for qualifications or request for um, aren't we asking for a quote or is that that's all part of it? They have to put a proposal in there. It's really an RFP. Well, you want your qualifications, don't you? So it's just a proposal, you want to see whether they're qualified? How they're qualified? I mean, I'm sure. Makes no difference to me. You know, What's the question? I'm sorry. Should it be a request for qualifications or a request for proposal? Oh, okay. The proposal is included in the clause, but Mr. Ullman's asking, should it be a request for proposal or a request for clause? That's fine. I mean, it's okay. like it's working, so. Yeah. If everybody's okay, I'm okay with leaving it just the way it is. All right, under miscellaneous meeting date, April 22nd. What is that? Well, Mr. Paula reminded me that that. Oh, yes, I am sorry. I am sorry. The 20s, we set a meeting date on Passover. So Which when we shifted it, the, yeah. only, the only thing is, is that it might play into our introduction of the budget. Yes. Can we move it? Is there anything on the 21st? Or is somebody way on the 21st? Yes, I'm sorry. No, the, no, we're not coming out on Sunday. No, no we're not coming out on Sunday. I'm, no, I'm no. going 23rd. Go to, I'm going to conference that night. So. If we could push, if you have to push to the 29th or the 30th, but I mean, the 22nd, it's, I don't know what Mr. Powell wants to do. 23rd is Tuesday. I, I was yeah, just wondering, Wednesday. you can't do the 20, what about 24th? No, I'm, that, listen, Wednesday, there's a Friday Wednesday. conference. 24th of Wednesday. So we'd have to move it to the 29th, you said? 9th or the 30th. <laughs> right. Now, the only thing is that the DCA, I asked if, we would be able to introduce the budget on the 22nd before this came up. Yes. Um, she said we could do on the 22nd. If we don't do it on the 22nd, possibly putting to that week, um, it would help some of it. So. What about if we move it to the week before? What meetings do we have for the week before right now? We have the 15th and the 17th. That's, that's what we have. That's what I'm saying. We have, we have what budget days? meeting on the 15th and the 17th. And 16th is zoning. The zoning That's 16th. Why we can't do that. So. What if we went the the Thursday night? Oh, you can't do that. We gotta get it to our financial guide. Yeah. Three days. I mean, Let's if we can wrap it up on what do we say, we were hoping if we could wrap it up on the 17th. Mark and I will sit that night and go over all the numbers to make sure it's correct, and then he could get it off to the financial, and then. I think we're we're in pretty good shape to be done by then, but, but we'll have to see. What do we want? Before the 22nd. 
second. We can't actually, we can't have a, Mr. Pollard, it's Passover, so we don't want to. He doesn't have to be here for the introduction. Of the oh, budget. Is anybody else, right, have else. A, does anybody else have an issue with being here on the 22nd for Passover? I understand no. it's a I'm religious sorry. holiday that we did not, it, it was not, it was not taken into account. So is everybody okay with I'm, leaving that on the date? I'm okay. I'm okay. Mr. Cassio, yeah. Mr. Allman, are you okay with it? Uh, I think it's, um, I mean, it's one of the highest holy days of their, of the Jewish calendar. I don't expect him to be here though. Excuse me? I don't expect him to be here. Mr. No. Paul, yeah, but we no. should just respect it not having a meeting. Yet. Not only, it's not only a issue of Mr. Paul, I think it's an, a broader issue of all yes. constituents, yes. you know. So why don't we try to wrap it up for the night of the 19th, which would then... The 19th. The 17th, excuse me, which then would give you the enough to still adopt it on the 22nd, right? Okay. So you do know not doing that. That's not three days, though. I'm confused. What's that? I'm saying not to have it on the 22nd. No, no, I'm saying we, if we could wrap the budget up, we make a point that we wrap it up on that, the second meeting of next week. This way, Mr. DeCarlo and Mrs. McCaskey can get it wrapped up and sent to the auditor. Okay, no. but what about the 22nd? That's what we're looking we'll for. We'll cancel for the 22nd is the intent. What's that? Why would you want to introduce it? Which day? On the 29th or the 30th? Is that what you're looking at? Yeah. I would ask for the 30th only because then I could be in here on Monday and get the packet together. That's, as long as that's you don't all. think it'll be an issue, that's fine. Everybody okay with that? So the new meeting would be the 30th? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay with that, Ruth? I can come the in on the topic. Would be the introduction. No, only topic. Be, no, 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 no. The April twenty second is the National Council, Council, Council meeting. People, you have to remember that's what's on the schedule. Yeah, that, that's what I said. So that's that's why I wanted to ask the question. Yeah. Unless you met on the twenty second and it wasn't. No, we cancel the twenty second meeting. We cancel yeah. the twenty second meeting and move it to the thirtieth. Is what I'm, I'm requesting. I think Mr. Allman made the same request, so this way we observe Passover without having the issue of not knowing. So yeah. the thirtieth is a Tuesday. Yes. Is okay. everybody okay with that? Yes. Yeah. All right. Now, so the other thing I have to ask Mr. Pollard, can I ask a question? Now that we've He's done muted. this, hello? You hear me? He's muted. You can hear me? All right. Hello, Mr. Sorry, Pollard. Yeah. My, yeah. Only, my only question I have for you now is that the resolution that we just introduced the ordinance with says that it's going to be on the 22nd. Can we go back and amend that to say yes. that it will be yeah. the ordinance that we just introduced? Yes, you can do that. Yes. So can I say yes for a motion to yes. just that? Yes. Everybody follow me? What's the number? One number 2408? Yeah, but you have the resolution that goes 2407. And you're going to have, um, yeah, 24208. If we can have a motion to amend that. I'll make a motion to amend resolution number 24-208 to be the April 30th date versus the April 22nd date. Do I have a motion? Uh, I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Roll call. Councilman Cassium. Yes. Councilman, um, I'm more flapping here. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Councilman Velez. Yes. Council President Fasena. Yes. Thank you very much. I so we will we everybody. will cancel the April 22nd yep. meeting and move it to April 30th. Okay, okay Mr. Pollock. Yeah, that's good by me. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 2024 budget discussion uh, continuing. So let's open up our budget books. Okay. Yeah. Can we take, I guess, can we take a five minute break? If everybody's okay with that? Yeah. Everybody okay with a five minute break? Sure.
List. So we start with number one, uh, right on page one. Uh, administrator 40120-110-110-136-782 requested, 136-782 recommended. Do I have a motion? Wait a minute, just let me catch up. Page one. Oh, yes, okay, uh, motion. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? Second. Second. Discussion? So, we're not, uh, so we're addressing this list for the open. We're going to go to the open ones and then we'll do some more, and then I want to go, and then we'll go to close just so we at can, the at the end, this way we know where, but I want to go through the open ones first, if that's okay, Mr. Oman. Okay. So the first one on the list is 40120100110, administrator. And we have a motion by Mr. Sears and a second by Ms. Velez. So my only question is, um, just contemplates an increase, correct? Yes. 2%. All right. Um, so it is 2%, correct. So last year there was uh, there was no action taken, I believe, because there was a arrangement for an additional week's vacation. Is that that is now passed, and this is the two percent, and the vacation goes back to the uh, schedule? No, the vacation stays. The extra week vacation stays? Yes, because he's the, the position has given up that week indefinitely of, of a salary increase. Like it won't build it that one week does not add to the two percent in future years. But the the the, the trade-off was exchange that week of the raise that I think it worked out to be almost to the penny. Um, that the, the, the week would stay indefinitely. I don't believe so. I disagree with that. Uh, well, I, I was here and that was the understanding. So was it, so you're saying in 2023, Mr. DeCauley, you gave up your raise for an extra week of vacation? Um, I, I don't know that we should be asking the employees directly. So well, I he's been right, so. It says you can talk about them. It doesn't say you can have a oh, dialogue okay. with them. Otherwise, the so Mr. Mayor, you believe be full of people. So you believe that the 134-100 includes giving up that set, that one week of, of extra vacation? Well, adding a week of additional vacation, not giving it up. Um, that, excuse me, but yeah. it gave up its 2% raise to add a week of vacation. Correct. So the 134 was the same as the 2022 salary. Correct. And it's not that I believe it, I, I know it to be factual. So 2022 and 2023 remain the same in order to get an extra week of vacation. That's correct. Okay. And how many weeks of vacation does this employee get? Um, that upped him to three weeks. Okay. And it's 35 hours in the office, correct? It's 35 hours. What does that mean? Is he not here 35 hours? Um, yeah, yeah. The, the position works more than 35 hours. It's a mix of remote and in office. Okay, thank you. So the extra week when I think it's five years, uh, when it goes to three weeks, does it then go to four weeks? Yes, it does. Okay, so I don't understand how an individual 
uh, a physician can forego one raise, one two percent raise, and get and essentially buy a extra week's vacation for the rest of their career. It's, it's just, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's cumulative. That raise does not factor into 23, 24, 25. That, that money is not paid in any of the future years. So wait, he doesn't have three weeks vacation this year? Only has two weeks? It was just last year he got an extra week? No, it, it's ongoing. Oh, okay. I, I, I thought what you just said. It. Oh, if, if I misstated it, no, it, it's indefinite for, for as long as this employee is in this position. And our employee handbook allows for that? I, I mean, I wasn't on council, so I'm just asking the question. Um, I, I don't know specifically if it does. The council at the time approved the action uh, when we brought it to them. I think we approved only that year. We didn't approve it ongoing. And if, if we have to go back through the record, we'll go back through the record. Because I don't think that's what the I don't think that's what the action was. I can't so, speak for the so, action. I don't know. So your suggestion, you're suggesting he gave up 2500 a week indefinitely for one extra week of vacation in one year. No, he gave up 2500 total. That would have been his raise. Right, but... No, he, but, not but, a week. But, no. He gave up $2,500 total for one week's of vacation. Right, but now if, if you take it the way Councilman Cassio is saying it, he's not getting that 2500 this year, but you're saying he's not entitled to the third week. That wouldn't make sense. It makes sense to me. It makes perfect sense. So, so, so you would give up get... you would give up a two percent raise for an extra vacation week one year. Apparently he did. Yes, he did. For but, one but year. No, ongoing. No. That's not let's go back to the record. I'm gonna ask to table this one and go back to the minutes. Those closed session minutes. Okay. So the, we can review the, that. The, this is why we have employees who are very upset because they can't count Wonderful. on things from year to year. Wonderful. Yes, it is wonderful. That's how we treat our employees. The first one right out of the gate. Well, the first one right out of the gate I, has a special, has special uh, this compensation from any other employee that only gets two years up until their fifth year. Two and weeks, this two particular years. Empl this particular employee now has special this compensation for being here for two years or three years. So I don't see how that's fair to the other employees, to be quite honest with you. Yep. Yeah. This employee asked, and in conjunction with the council, it was granted. If any other employee wants to ask, we would certainly take it under consideration and bring it to the council. I would like, I would like to go back to the record because I think it was for one year. That's my recollection. Okay. Um, okay. Who, who's going to check what record? What are you looking for? We'll go, go back to the minutes. Okay. Can I just? Can we clarify? What's the question here? The question is that this employee. Did for, for did not receive a raise in 2023. Correct. Correct. For an additional week of vacation. Correct. With with that now becoming in perpetuity that week of vacation, but he only lost the raise one year. While all, all other employees only qualify for two weeks. So if all the other employees decided to do the same thing, would they qualify for the same thing? Which I don't think is valid. Mr. But Mr. Mr. Allman asked the question, so I, I should let Mr. Allman speak to what he's trying to do. Yeah, so when this came up, I had asked in the, I had asked as a member of the public, and it's not allowed under the employee handbook, because the employee handbook doesn't speak to it. The employee handbook doesn't speak to it. And Mr. Pollard indicated that it was approved as part of the budget process. So it was a count, council granted that extra week in lieu of a raise. And I guess I'm questioning by foregoing one raise, or one periodic raise, you have an extra week's vacation in perpetuity. And to me, that just sounds, I don't understand how that financially works to the benefit of the town and the taxpayers. <clears throat> so that's because my those, question. So, so I guess what you're trying to say is those dollars that we 
spent in 2023 are going to be additional dollars in 2024 because his rate is higher. So now his week of vacation that he gave up in 2023 is worth more in 2024 and going in the future if he would continue to get raises. Like if I got if I earned a three thousand dollar vacation in twenty twenty three, and then when you add two percent on top of that, that three thousand dollar vacation is now a three thousand plus two percent vacation, so it's increasing. Yeah, but I, I guess it's it's more fundamental than that. It's <clears throat> would would you forego? So the argument last year was, if I recall, that. Um, the salary for the compensation for one week's of vacation essentially equated to the raise that was being forgiven. Correct. So if that's the case, how is that um, different this year? How is that different this year? Well, you know, so we're giving a raise, <clears throat> essentially we're giving a raise, um, we're giving a extra week in perpetuity for the $2,000 or whatever that 2% was uh, last year. The, the, the town is saving 2,500 a year in granting this additional week of vacation every year from the fact that it stayed stagnant from 22 to 23. Now, this year it's in for a 2% based on almost you could say the 22 salary because it didn't get anything. So. I feel I and the employee believe that that was the trade off. So right okay. now, the 136, 782 includes three weeks vacation. That's correct. correct? And, With the and, and the employee gets yes. all the work done that is required of the position. Oh, and, and save the some. taxpayers money uh, every year to not build on that twenty five hundred plus two percent every year or whatever the annual increase would be in future years. But there, but there is a net delta in the future years because that those dollars that he for, you know, he foregoed in 2023 are now 2% higher in 2024. So there is yes, a delta, but, but we're not but, saving as much. We're still saving, but we're not saving as much. Um, well, you're saving us the 2% that would have been built on that is not built on that. It's not factored in. I mean, you know, again, if we want to demoralize this employee, um, I will instruct him to work 35 hours as opposed to, you know, anyone picking up the phone, calling him at any time and getting a response. That is, he, he does respond every time. Every time I've called him, he has been diligent and I appreciate all Mr. DiCarlo's uh, great effort he's made in this position compared to people in the past. So I thank Mr. DiCarlo. He does pick up the phone every time I call him. I've called him during the week. I've called him on a weekend. I've te well, he's texted me on the weekend. I've texted him back. Mm -hmm. So I'm not disagreeing with uh, anything you're saying, Mr. Mayor. And there have been plenty of days where it's his quote unquote day off and he is still conducting business. I've I've even spoken. I think to that's him. part of being the administrator. I mean, that's on that's a Sunday. Yeah, yeah, but if it's no, thirty-five it's not on hours, a Sunday. It's, I mean, it's been we all Sunday. Do, we all yeah. it, when you, when you're in senior leadership, we all have to do more. It's 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 a it's, well, it's if we're going to go based on the handbook, I think the handbook would say different. So we can look at it as the letter of the handbook, or we can look at it in the spirit of the handbook. He definitely puts in and, way more than 35 and, hours. And I'm going to say right now, then if that was only for last year, then I'm going to change my recommendation for a 4% raise this year because that was just last year. So why should he give up 2% in perpetuity for getting a vacation an extra week in one year? So if this council wants to cost the taxpayers more money indefinitely. I don't think that's the question. I think the question is, was it was it in perpetuity or was it a one year deal? But if it's a one year, then I'm changing my recommendation to four percent, because then he got robbed of two percent every year, and that was not his understanding nor my understanding. Okay. 
Any further discussion on this? Well, I'd like to. Do we want to table it as for? But I'd time? like to motion for the. Well, we already we already motioned for the number that's there. We. I thought that's a motion for discussion. Yeah, for discussion. Yeah. So. So I would like to motion for the one thirty six seven eighty two. But I just want to make sure, Dr. Do you make a motion to table this or not, or you just wanted to table it? Uh, I want to take a look at the uh, the record at the minutes. As my understanding was it was for one year, and I think I mean, that, the three I think of you that, said I, I can't. I don't. I wasn't I in the meeting, so I can't discuss it I, until I look at the meeting. That's why you got to look at the minutes. No, I thought that's that's how it was. So. So what would you like to do? Today? I would like to motion for the one thirty six seven eighty two with the three weeks vacation. I'd second that. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilman Cassio. No. Councilman Ullman? No. Sorry, Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilwoman Belez? Yes. Councilman DeSena. Council President DeSena. Yes. Administration. I, I thank you for that, Mike. It's the right thing to do. Administrative Secretary, 40120-100-120, 60,047-40 requested, 60,048 recommended. So I just, I guess they just rounded it up. Uh, that's 2%, correct? That yes. is, according yes. to the chart, that is 2%. Yes. Do I have a motion to discuss? Yes. Second? Second. Discussion? Yes, if anybody deserves a raise, she definitely does. Well, this person that has this position does. Extraordinary. Um, runs DPW, does town events. Uh, uh, I, I can't talk anymore about how she handles professionally. And I've been there when people have gone off on her and she still or maintains her position and her cool, extraordinary worker, like all of our, our employees are. But she just has that little exception. Thank you, Mr. Sears. Thank you, Council President. Well, we can speak of them by name, correct? Yes, and I, I just I just had one question. Uh, Mr. Mayor, this position was filled mid-year last year, right? That's why there's a discrepancy between the uh, actual and the approved. I'd like the administrator to answer that. Yes, sir. She she began Correct. her position in March. I think. All right. That's why I'm making sure. That's why there's a discrepancy there. Yes. That's fine. I thought I thought she started mid like first quarter. Or right. Was. Any other discussion, ladies and gentlemen? I just I want to speak to Renata, who has been an absolute blessing for the position. Um, Bernadette was wonderful. <clears throat> Renata has exceeded my expectations. Like Councilman Sear said, she is a go-getter. She stays on top of it all. She's so organized, works well with the public, professional. Um, she has helped out tremendously in so many of the projects that I've tried to initiate. Um, so I thank her personally. I think this is, you know, this is, a dime in the bucket for what she brings to the table. So I'll motion for the full amount. But we already did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? Yeah. How long has uh, this employee been employed by the town? A little over a year. And has she been offered uh, an accommodation on her vacation? or buyback or however we're phrasing it? No, and she has not uh, requested one. And I apologize, February 13th of 2023. I thought it was March 13th, February 13th. Thank you. Any other discussion? 
Roll call. Councilman Cassio. No. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Councilman Velez. Yes. Council President DeSena. Yes. I just need to find the next person. Uh, Mr. DiCarlo, do you help me where that person is? Yes, the purchasing assistant. Mm -hmm. No, she's uh, closed. Uh, no, I'm sorry. she changed yeah. it to No, she changed it to open. Oh, she changed so it she to did, yeah. yeah, purchasing, payroll, QPA, recycling coordinator. I just. So what are you looking for, sir? Whoever that is. Uh, That's Dina Terabokia. Yeah, yeah, correct. Dina Terabokia. I don't know what page she's on. And um, she's I don't know if I can tell you yet, because I think you got to make a motion, but yeah. we have to adjust that number just to remind you, because we took it out of financial services. To put it in her salary, the QPA number. Right, so you'd be diff you'd be voting on a different number than the fifty-two. All right, where where I just need to know where she is. That's all. Oh, oh where right did John left? Did I miss it? I no. miss it. Right after the administrative secretary. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I wasn't three. picking up what you're putting down. Purchasing assistant. <laughs> the third one, yeah. oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was going based on. It's got so many. She's got so many titles. I didn't know which one it was. So. It's, so now you said we pulled out the QPA out of what line? I just want to make sure I know where it so is. So QPA took, came out of financial services fee? Page 10 at the bottom. I quit. I was lucky. <laughs> uh, yes. So financial services fee originally was 23000 We took six out, which was a roundup of a little bit. Um, the exact number is 5916 which would be so last year. Oh, can we talk, start talking about it yet? Or? Oh, I just need to make a moment. Yeah, Give me one second. Okay. Uh, purchasing assistant 40120 100 140 52592 requested, 52592 recommended. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? I guess, can we let Mr. DePaulo just continue on where the numbers came from? Thank you. So, under financial services fee last year in the budget, Council approved uh, the 23,000. 23,000 included Lurch Vinci Bliss and the stipend for QPA, which was increased from the previous year 4,800 to 5,800 as a collateral duty. Last year, we did not ask for any, any percent increases on collateral duties or meetings or anything. This year, we did request a 2% increase on collateral duties. This is just the first, first one we've come across that would clarify is what I'm just calling a collateral duty. So her salary line said 52,592. I'm requesting that the 5,916 be added to the 52,592 coming to a total of 58,508. That total number of 58,508 would include a 2% raise on the purchasing assistance um, salary from 2023. So 51,509 plus 2% is 52,592. The addition of 5,916, 5,916 is a 2% raise from the stipend 5,800 last year. I hope that wasn't confusing. So that's how I came to the whole number of 58. 508. So if we added 5,800 to the 23 and then put a 2% on all of it, that's how I'm coming to the 59,508. Again, you know, maybe don't make on terrific employee that wears many hats is our qualified purchasing agent, which has incredible amount of benefits to our town, one of which is increases the bid threshold from 17.5 to 44, which in turn saves us money. She's also so how, does she, how does she get the QPA stipend now? Is it an extra check? No, it's it's divided up into payroll. And uh, Councilman Ullman brought up, um, I don't know if I call it a concern, but you know, he brought up a good question. Why was it being paid out of that um, financial services fee, and I really couldn't come up with a better answer other than that's the way we've always done it. So in correcting that, we took it out of financial services and want to just make it the base salary, which includes purchasing, qualified purchasing agent in that purchasing assistant line. So essentially it wouldn't be a stipend anymore. It would be, it would be folded into the salary. She does a low SAP too? 
Uh, well, she has a hand. There's, there's a couple things that have multiple people's hands in it. So she she does it along with Joy. Well, it says low sap and QPA stipend on there. So, well, on which one? You on, on the line we're taking the money out of it's the low sap and QPA stipend is the 5800. Right, and that that just included. So, so somebody AFS, else getting part of that low sap? No, no, no. I'm sorry if if you read it that way. It's not how I intended it. That line was AFS budget review, ADS low sap, and QPA stipend. So the low sap is referring to the Lurch Vinci Bliss fee. Okay. So she's not getting paid anything extra for low sap. All right. I just, it, it's, the way the comment and everything was, it was yeah, that no. low sap and Thank QPA. you for letting me clarify that. No, she's, she, we're not requesting any. That's part of her job, as well as it is as part of someone else's job, too. And sorry, go ahead. She, the total of the two is paid as a W W two. Absolutely. And what about the coordinator? The, recyc the recycling coordinator is a different person. Has it changed since the? Oh my gosh! I'm sorry. I'm 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 getting confusing myself. The recycling coordinator is the same person. Yes. So since I've been here, that's been a thousand dollar stipend. That's being split now between um, DPW and this person. Yes, a DPW employee and and Miss Terabokia. Tremendous amount of work. Five hundred dollars is is uh, is is nothing because obviously you know that position allows us to get the um, recycling tonnage grant, which is. Um, like $23,000 that we received this year. Tremendous amount of schooling, tremendous amount of reporting. So, but that $500, sir, is not included in this line. So it would be the 58508 plus okay. the recycling coordinator. So just for this discussion and ongoing the rest of the budget, I just would like to understand what you're referring to as salary and a stipend. Okay. Is there, you know, is there a put, so the work, whatever you call it, salary or stipend, the work is the work. So that's not really the question. I guess, is there a distinction that you're making or that we should be making in looking at this? So is a stipend, so, and I'm not, saying they're like for like, but the mileage stipend is never, hasn't been subject to an increase in the 15 years I've been following it. Okay. So you get it. So is this now considered salary or? So what we're doing based on, well, the way it originated with the QPA stipend is because it was an outside person, right? It was a Correct. consultant. So then last year was the first whole year that Ms. Terabokia was the QPA. But again, and just not getting getting to that part of correcting it, that's where it was in the financial fee. Then you brought it to my attention. Hey, yes, that's it's more accurate to fold that stipend into her salary. She's always going to be the QPA while she's here. The recycling coordinator position, although she shares it with another person, may not always be her. Be, be, be Dina. Okay. I'm hoping it is, but that's why we're keeping that still as the stipend. So that's kind of the origins is how I understand the QPA working. And um, are, go ahead. are you, so just for transparency, if the role happens to split again at some point, you'd like to combine it to one line or you're should we keep it separate? I Meaning think we should keep the, it. The ahead. QPA and the, the purchaser. No, I, I think that. I Can think we just add to that line all her things so we know it's clear? Well, I don't, like, I don't should, think we should, especially since recycling coordinator. No, I'm saying we add QPA to this line. Yeah, we, we are. That's the 50 that, That's what originated. So there's going to be purchasing assistant and QPA. Correct. Well, I can just change the line to QPA because. Well, you're not gonna, but you don't want you to mean add it, purchasing assistant and QPA. QPA. You don't want to make it QPA because then it looks like you're paying a QPA yeah. 57, 58. And break it out underneath. Which I mean, 
Will she get? No, I mean, I can say purchasing assistance slash QPA. Yeah, that's I what I'd say, like to see. Yeah. yeah, I can do that. But I think we should definitely keep the recycling coordinator. But again, it goes through payroll, all the appropriate taxes and um, are taken out of the $500 um, out of there. Mr. And the, Carlo, the, what, beside, what line is the recycling coordinator under them? That's going to stay where it is. The right? recycling coordinator? Real. It's far. It's real low down in the, uh, way in the, back. the budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that line, when we get to it, we'll still ask for 1000 and then just understand 500 goes to Dina, 500 goes to a DPW employee. So this line that you're voting on will just be, this is now, we're now folding that QPA stipend of $5,800 into into the line for purchase assistant, making <laughs> it just one true. line for 58508. Okay. 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 And 35 hours. And is this an exempt or non exempt position? What's that mean? Is it eligible for overtime? Or not? Oh, no. None of, none of the town hall employees are, are eligible for overtime. If that comes up again, the only ones are the, the contractual employees, which would be DPW and police. No, no telling how employees are or can receive overtime. Well, that are our hourly ones. Right? Well, it wouldn't be overtime. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. It could be straight time. Yeah. Right. 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 Somebody's overtime. I meant extra straight hours. hours. Yeah. I can Sorry. satisfy both. Yeah. Of you. Yes. Our thirty-five yeah. hour employees yeah. do yeah. not receive overtime. Right. Thank you. So. Um, and again, I know you didn't ask, and I know you believe me. They frequently, all of our town hall employees, come in early to stay late, so they get the work done, whether it's 35, 36. And I know you didn't ask that, but I'm, I'm just letting you. So my only concern, and oh, Ken dropped off. I don't think he stays for the budget portion. No, I don't know if he stayed. Or he... Mr. Paul, are you still with us, or did you leave us? My yeah. only concern is if. Yeah, I'm here. Oh. There you go. My, my concern with this is that um, if they are non-exempt, if the role they are performing is non-exempt and they're not being paid overtime, are we at risk? Okay, so I, I wasn't getting the initial conversation. So give me the give me the uh, the initial conversation. So I, I just asked that we were discussing one one position, one role, and I asked that they were working 35 hours. Yes. I asked if they were exempt or non-exempt. And uh, was we're told or the discussion was they're not eligible for overtime, which I understand. So they if they work 38 hours or 40 hours, they get paid a 35 hour salary. So my question to you is, um, do, don't they have to be classified as exempt or non-exempt based on their role? And if they're non-exempt, don't we have to pay overtime? You know, I would think yes, but I'd have to look at that. We have a policy on it. I just don't have it with me. We have a policy on all the time. So, and I understand there's a policy on overtime, but uh, this is, it's a federal. It yeah, there's a federal law. There's the a federal the policy law. comes from our insurance company. We didn't modify it at all. <laughs> so they're salary employees. So they generally do more than 35 if they on their own. They're not demanded to do it but if they stay late on their own they don't put in for overtime so and i've seen more than enough settlements where so you know and again not to underestimate the skill set or underestimate the effort or the knowledge but when i look at some of the job titles and descriptions, you know, it causes me to I understand. I understand. Thank you, Bruce. Let me explain. Any other any further discussion? Roll call. Uh, you're, I'm sorry. You were vote. Can someone just check my math? 58508. Yeah, that's what I was just going to double check. You so did. That's so, what I came up with. Okay, yeah. thank you.
You're welcome. All right, so um, we have a motion for um, Councilwoman Velez, a second by Councilman Sears. Roll call will be Councilman Cassio. No. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Yes. Councilwoman Velez. Yes. And Council President DeSena. Yes. The next one is enclosed. The next one we have is Assistant Clerk Elections Health Secretary, which is on. Um, which one? Lisa, Lisa Cornelia. Oh, yeah, where's that list? So it's on page. Page six. Six. Yes. yes. She's going to have a couple different lines. So, assistant to clerk 401 201 20120 49980 requested, 49980 recommended. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? It's a 2% raise, just in case that question yes, comes I, up. I was just going to have to say that. It's a 2% <laughs> raise. And Any discussion? Michael, although it would require jumping around, do you want to handle a person or do you just want to handle line items as they come up? Because this person draws from more than one line. Yeah, I think we should do all three line yeah, items okay. she has. I think that's get rid of all three of them, sure. just like we did the last one. So, right. so it's we're on 4012012020 on page six. Mm -hmm. I have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? Yeah. What's, what's that? So, what is a assistant clerk? What's the going rate for an assistant clerk? A lot more than this if you look at our surrounding towns. Just like every other position we've been told. She's a certified municipal clerk, correct? No. She's not. No. Even though she's not certified, if we look at her job classification, I, I think Sue, it, it almost exactly, almost exactly mirrors your job responsibilities. Yes. I'm just going to the tab of her job description because if you guys did go to her job description, it might make it easier only because it has um, her description for everything she does. So assistant to clerk and the board of health secretary, which which will be next. Do we have any? Well, let's get through this line first. So yeah, no, I know. I'm just telling you that the classification has everybody. Both. Everybody. Any other discussion on this line? Well, so I don't know because it's uh, the role reports to the council versus reporting to the administration. If they have input previously on this, or but you know. It seems like it's awfully light, but you know, I would like to understand if we could. I'm, I'm trying to find uh, the page, Mr. Alman. Give me one second, I'll, unless you found it already. Here it is. Um, assistant to Clerk, Board of Health Secretary. Responsibilities: responsibilities, alcohol and beverage control, animal licensing, block parties, budget preparation, collection of fees, planning board site development, council meetings, Daniel's Law. Deposits, monthly reconciliations, ecology permits, dump permits, election, June primary, November general. Financial disclosure statements, landlord tenant registrations, limos, licenses, minutes, monthly clerk revenue repo reports, no knock registry when requested, notary services, OPRAs, ordinances, resolutions, postings on website, public notices, raffle licensing, records retention, requisitions, road opening permits, PDSCNG and Vialia, soil moving permits, towing, I think continue. we should add more money to this person. Tree vendors, <laughs> health department, she's the deputy registrar, of budget preparation, five advisory board of health day meetings per year, certified copies of marriage licenses, debts. So this is under her other stipend, correct? This health department right. is the second stipend. Flu clinic, licensing establishments in the township, licensing snack stands, marriage license application process issue licenses. Monthly health revenue reports, pool licensing, rabies clinics in November, registration of vendors. Under Tyco, 
which would be animal control, right? Yes. Dog bites, unregistered pets, complaints, rabies clinic assistance. Um, and that is the end of our long list of duties. I think we're a little light on the money for her. So, may I, can I ask Mr. Uh, Mayor Collinor, excuse me. Um, when you have done other assessments of uh, market, have you included this role in those assessments? Um, no, I have not. Not, okay. not this role. Okay. Because so, I, I think it's too broad. Uh, assistant to clerk can mean different things to different municipalities. In some, it's a part time function, in some, it's a full time function. So it's hard to get an apples to apples comparison on market on this. Understood. I mean, I would, I would like to understand, taking into account the mayor's comments, um, you know, what some of the assistant clerks in neighboring communities uh, are compensated at. Do you want to table us until we get that information, or? I mean, I... They're going to have to write notice in. Or do I have to write notice in for you again? Or? Depends. Do you want to make a motion to adjust it, Mr. Alden? Well, I don't want to just adjust it. Okay. I mean, I'd like a, I'd like a basis. Is this of what the uh, surrounding towns are doing at this position? And we could, you know, there's a motion to approve it as is. Yes. We could approve it as is. And then change it later on. You know, so could we could we revisit uh, could we leave the motion as is, and then see if we could revisit what other assistant clerks are getting in other towns and present it at the next meeting. Do you feel that it's when you said too light? You're saying that perhaps there's a need for an increase. Is that what you're getting at? Yes, that's what I'm. Okay. I, I, you'd agree with that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. Well, she has an old load. We're not paying the proper amount for her. But I will. I like. I like Mr. Allman's. I like to approve it as is, and yes. then get a, a response back of what the surrounding areas are uh, paying their assistant clerks. We agree. As long as we have a duty of what they're doing. I agree. And then we'll revisit this before we finalize the budget. Is everybody okay with that? Yep. I'm good. Okay. So I'm going to leave it as a check mark, but we're going to revisit. All right. So let's roll call at the existing item 49980, requested 49980, recommended with the uh, ability to come back to this later on and revisit it once we have more information from surrounding assistant clerks. Good? Yes. Roll call. Councilman Cassio? No. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Councilman Velez? Yes. Council President DeSantis? Yes. What's the next line for her is elections, right? So that's down. And, uh, before, sir, before you Pleasure. carry on, uh, Ms. Winkowski, is this something you can assist with through your, I guess, your messaging with other? Yeah, I can look and see what the, the latest one it has um, that I have because I have a feeling I might have put that position in there. But I will look. We, yes. we wouldn't assist. Would it be accurate to classify her as a deputy municipal clerk? Well, that's something that's been said for a while, but I never wanted to go. But further. does it need one of the certifications no, to do? You don't have to be certified to do that as well. Okay. And, you know, it's not. Well, we could revisit that also if we want to. Yeah. That's what we want to change your title to. And right. that's a, a recommendation. I'm, I, I, yes. Council President, may I make a comment? Yes. Mr. Um, I, I want as much as our employees are entitled and are working for. However, if that's the basis you're establishing for raises, uh, to do, be it fair, we have to apply that to every salary in here. Um, you can't just go based on the volume of functions. You have to go based on the volume and quality of work. All right. And so I do have a concern, okay. although I, I want to see our people get increases where it's deserved. Again, we, we just said we'd revisit. We just say. wanted to revisit this one. That's, and we may not revisit it once, mm -hmm. you know, so. 
Well, so I completely appreciate that, uh, Mayor Calamari. But and correct me if I'm wrong, but there have been large salary adjustments yes. outside of the the two percent, if we call it that, mm -hmm. in pr prior. Um, prior budgets that didn't address every person. Mm -hmm. They were specific to a an individual or individuals. So, you know, that's my... Yeah, that's why we said let's revisit it once we have the numbers. So her the second line is on page 8, election salary and wages, 401-201-100, 1,050 requested, 1,050 recommended. That's which, not okay. That's not all. No. That's, you know, I, I saw the path. I'm sorry to jump in, but I saw the path you were going. No. That which is number for, are we looking at? This is not the election. Two zero one two one two one one zero zero. That's on page eight. Correct. Yes. Correct. That is not that the is second. Split between them. That is split between the two of us. So I, what my, my comment was going to be is that how come that didn't get, everybody else got a 2% raise. Why didn't that line get a 2% raise? That's why I didn't understand that. Which, which line? The, on page eight, election, salary, and wages, if we, if we stick to what this budget pretty much entails, everybody got a 2% raise, including in their stipends, mm -hmm. except for this line and a couple other lines. I believe Miss me and Sue had some conversation regarding that. Sue, did you want to discuss that? I was just told to keep it the same. Uh, by who? By me? Oh, it was just a direction from administration in general that we were trying to keep everything level and not look for anything over. And you know, I wasn't going to argue it because I figured it's what to be asked of. Uh, I'll shoot you my different. I'm certainly not. I'm, I mean, I'd probably leave that to the mayor, but I'm sure you. are but you want to recommend the two percent? So let's. So this is the second part. That's why part I didn't of, put it on there. This is it, the second part of Cornelia's thing. No, I was it's going not. to motion. It's, What's that? It is or it's not. But it's not it the is. full amount. That's what I'm saying. Oh, that's what I'm split. saying to you. It's lumped in between the two of us. She gets paid. I think it's 150 dollars, 125 dollars oh, yeah. per if, election. If you look at the salary comparison chart, yes, Thank she's you. in for 125 per, per election. election. Thank you, Mayor. And, 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 and for my budget. Yeah, it's right here. There you go. So just so you know. So Lisa Cornelia, Cornelia Lisa is right here. Yes, it's 125 per, yeah, election. per election. Right, so two times a year. Well, right. yes, two times a year. I think she gets more, right? Yeah. yeah. No, no, for elections, Cornelia only gets 125 total. Right, but I believe the other. No, it's. The other one she gets one the board the, the board of health meetings she gets one twenty five per meetings but for elections it's one twenty five total. No, it's per, per election. Per election. Which is two of each year. Two of each year. Primary in general. Okay. Because it doesn't say that here, but that's fine. Yeah, it doesn't specify. Yeah, yeah it, it should say one twenty five per election like the line below it says 125 per meeting yeah i think so, that's what's which we can add well, that in future years right but i mean you, we go by a salary ordinance that's exactly where i'm going right now are you pulling it up yep okay thank you mm -hmm. and then her third thing is um on page 46 health secretary which on here it Should shows. we vote on this no, approval? No, I'm looking this up just no. to make sure, Council. Mm -hmm. Well, on a, on a split line item like this, it's going to be hard to vote the line item mm -hmm. when more than one person draws from it the way you're doing it. So, yeah. unless there's no discussion. Yeah, if there's no discussion. Yeah. All right. So, Council, I'm going to the clerk gets four hundred dollars per election, and the um, assistant gets one hundred twenty-five dollars per election. And that's right. twice. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, that's, 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 10, that's 10 that's 10 right. Yep. Yes. Okay. So do we have a motion for 401201211100 for 1050 requested 1050 recommended do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? This is the it's 400 for the clerk for two 
for a total eight of 800, election. and the assistant gets 125 and 125 per election. So that makes 1050. But I guess to your question, is it uh, where these stipends or were they remain flat? They got they got a non applicable for a percent increase. It's listed under sales, salary wages. I think that's what my Mr. Holmes was getting at, as opposed to yeah, it's part of their salary. Yes, yeah. but but they did not get an increase. I understand that. Yes. So my question is, should if we're applying a two percent with the exceptions highlighted? I, I mean, I don't know. That sort of goes back to the earlier question of what's a stipend, what's a salary. You know, the recycling coordinator didn't increase. Yeah, but the QPA did. <laughs> so the same, yeah, mm -hmm. one did, one didn't. So it's like where I, I guess I and again, I don't I don't know the scope. I personally don't know the scope of both of those. Um but to me, the QPA sounds like it's a much uh, more burdensome position, for lack of a better term, to the employee, and it, it it's part of her primary role. So I I mean I that's how I okay. rationalize that it's salary, not that recycling coordinator mm -hmm. isn't, but it is a lesser role. I mean I I don't know how to how we define it. Okay. So, and uh, just, just to point out, although I'm sure you're all seeing it, uh, for the first three years, that position paid 950, then it jumped to 1050. So I guess the real question is, are we going to increase it by 2% annually, or are we just going to review it like every two or three years and give it a, a bigger bump than what the 2% would have been? So perhaps we could just somewhere on this call it either a salary like a mm -hmm. you know 1099 or mm -hmm. understanding that the other ones are mm -hmm. and other ones are stipends and okay. mm -hmm. they're, they're treated differently yes you know okay. they're reviewed every three years or every two years mm -hmm. whatever it is right mm -hmm. any further discussion on this line roll call <clears throat> Kelvin casio yes Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Uh, yes. Councilwoman Velez? Yes. And Council President DeSena? Yes. So now we go to Health Secretary. Where's that? Page 46. Page 46, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. It is uh, 4012733160 health part-time secretary, 2,142 requested, 2,142 recommended. Do I have a motion? One second. I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? A second. Any discussion? This is all her salary, correct? Mm -hmm. Roll call. Councilman Cassio. No. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Councilwoman Belez? Yes. Council President DeSena? Yes. Okay, the next one we have is Joy A. a no, no, no. Sorry, yes. Secretary Meeting Fees. You have to go down one more line, please. Oh, okay. Uh, health, Secretary Meeting Fees, 401. 2733017065 requested, 625 recommended. This is another zero line increase. Do I have any discussion? A motion, second. A motion. So moved. Second. second. Roll call. Are you going to do any discussion? Any no, discussion. There's no, there's no chance. Okay. Councilman Cassio. Uh, yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Councilman Belez. Yes. Council President DeSeven. Yes. Now we're done. Now we're at Joy A. Parr. I think she's in the front. Yeah. 
Uh, we're going to go to page, like page 11. 11. Yep. 11? Halfway down the page. Tax collector 4012014511. Uh, do I have a motion? Uh, 67626 requested, 67626 recommended. 2%. So moved. That's 2%. Yes, sir. Do I have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. Yes, that's 2%. Any discussion? Does this office have night hours, Mr. DeCarlo? Uh, when need be, yes. We, we tried it. It didn't seem to be beneficial for the residents. Um, so now we extend to night hours during the, I think it's the grace period. Correct. Uh, and, and during, you know, when it's yeah, when the payments are due. due. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So on, on the quarter on the quarterly grace periods, we do have nine hours because yes. I've gotten complaints that people have come here and there was nobody here and they had to come back during the day. So I, that was last. That was last. Mm -hmm. Not recently. It was okay. last year. So. That, that's been addressed. Okay. Any other discussion, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, just because you brought it up. So does this office have night hours? Just quarterly when the tax payments are, when people are coming in to pay taxes. And that's during the, the grace period, you said. So two weeks of grace, was it two weeks of grace period? No, 10, ten days. Ten days. So well, it ends up two. Yeah, business days versus calendar days. Is it? I missed one. Okay. Okay. I don't want to no, put no, out but... misinformation. Uh, so it's uh, the last night of the grace period. Okay, thank you. I think it's important to understand that we tried it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the feedback that we received was it wasn't beneficial to, it wasn't, we weren't finding it beneficial to have consistent night hours on Monday. Okay. However, it is advertised when we do have the extended extended time for the residents during the grace period so just be, only because we're on this line how, how does because we have an early dismissal on friday where the the hours are less on friday Correct. but part of that is there are extra hours up front mostly on monday i believe for those departments some department well one department and that's the clerk's office so when we went to this new schedule we consulted with the department heads and the clerk's office requested to remain the same as we were mm -hmm. oh and I'm, i apologize and the building department i believe is open late on monday the other departments elected to reduce their lunch hours to a half hour where the clerk's office did not. The clerk takes an uh, hour and they stay late on Mondays. The rest of the departments only take a half hour lunch, most of them which remain in their office and are working lunches. And that's how um, we close the building at 1.30 in the afternoon for all the offices except the clerk's office. The clerk's office closes at 12 30 on Fridays okay so they're working a half hour every day during lunch for two hour off on Fridays they get a half hour lunch which makes up for two and a half hours I'm sorry two and a half hours a week right it equals 35 work hours okay Any other discussion on this line? Roll call. Councilman Casio. No. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Councilman uh, Councilwoman Velez. Yes. 
Council President Desen. No. Deputy Treasurer, where's that one? It says Deputy Treasurer, um, Health Coordinator. That? It might be before it. What page? That's oh, going to be page looking. nine. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's before it. Deputy Treasurer, Benefits Coordinator. Deputy Treasurer, Benefits Coordinator, 4012013016. 5,712 requested, 5,712 recommended. Do I have a motion? Uh, so moved. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Yeah, just one second. So who is the treasurer, Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Corcoran. Mr. Corcoran has the, the title of treasurer. Okay. So this employee assists Mr. Corcoran in what I couldn't see. Well, we can go to the job class. That's what I was just doing, sorry. I think in all fairness, we could I could read off the duties and responsibilities for deputy treasurer. That's fine, if you, if you have it already. Yep, benefits coordinator, HR, oversee pension, health insurance, dental, 457 plan, which is investment plan, life insurance, enrollments, which include changes, updates, inquiries, employee liaison, vendor liaison, coordinate efforts for possible plan change. And uh, you know, I'll digress for a second. This is the individual that's implementing our new health care and saving um, the township significant amount of money. Uh, to continue revenue collection, she's our central cashier. Preparation uh, of the bill list, manage monthly, quarterly, annual payments and reports for Board of Ed, library, health insurance, dental, life insurance, GIF, county taxes, debt requirements, pension liability, COA, which is developers, fees, management, coordinate, reporting with planner, out, police outside billing, admin fees, calculations, bank transfers, general ledger entry, processing, work with police department on collection, the low SAP report, which we talked about, which is coordinating the paperwork, new enrollments, updates, member inquiries, annual coordination of contributions, the 1099s, preparation reports, coordination, corrections, mailing, submissions to Fed and state, electronic and paper, our bond band coordination, which are paperwork signatures, bank wires, update to general ledger with in conjunction with the CFO, bank liaison with Valley Bank, updates, changes in paperwork, signatories, transfers, wires, overdrafts. Uh, NSF is uh, not coming to mind. Non sufficient funds. Non, non sufficient funds, supplies, coordinate, positive pay security. And on that, just so you know, um, she was um, imperative in having an upcoming meeting scheduled with another bank. Not that we're, you know, we're not going to cause hysteria. But the CFO and and Ms. Apar as the deputy treasurer are always looking to um, see how we can improve our investments with the bank, get better you know service from the banks. Some banks are very competitive right now; they're offering us a lot. So, her in conjunction with the CFO schedule the meeting, upcoming meeting with the finance department to see what other banks have to offer us that we're not receiving already. Bank transfers, check signatory for payables, unemployment. Audit liaison to order during the year and during annual auditing. Escrow account management, which is a significant duty. Uh, again, all these are outside of the tax collector uh, process township engineers. There's this many, you know, we have several engineers to work with as Lena Beckmeyer Boswell. Invoices, engineering road opening, escrow refunds, resolutions, escrow shortages, performance bonds. Uh, dealing with Mr. Pollard on escrow accounts and continue working on open payables and constant communication with engineers and applicants, records and retention management. And uh, might I add that I, I know um, seems like the clerk's office, it seems to be a popular office for people to select when they're going through a phone tree. And uh, Miss Power, even I love her to do this because it takes time away. She never uh, dodges a phone call from a resident. If she can help them in any way, um, she takes time out of her day. She doesn't just forward the call. Um, so again, that's very much like the clerk's office. A lot of people go to the tax collector. 
Um, and then, you know, it continues on to the escrow responsibilities, escrow releases, and, and so forth. So a lot of duties for the, you know, the, the amount of money that we're asking for. Any further discussion, ladies and gentlemen? Roll call. Councilman Cassio. No. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Councilwoman Velez. Yes. Council President DeSena. No. Um, Grace Kalish, Planning Zoning Board uh, for the Adjustment Secretary is on page. Let me know when you're ready and I'll explain how we do this too. 2019. Secretary salary right here. It's uh, four, it's on page uh, 19 is the secretary salary, right? Yes, and if you can four zero, kind of put your, let me just get it introduced. Oh, yes, sir. Four zero one two one one eight zero one three zero. It is twenty thousand requested, twenty thousand recommended. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Thank you, sir. So just to inform the council, if you put your thumb there and you just go to the next page, which would be twenty one, you're going to see the zoning office slash board clerk, another 20,000. So in 2023, her salary for administrative duties to the zoning board and the planning board was a total of 37, I'm sorry, 35,000. So we're requesting a increase of $2,500 in each one of these lines, bringing Ms. Kalish to a total salary of $40,000. But it's still a part time. No, oh no, it's, it's between a, the two. It's full time. It's now. full time. Yes, we brought her to full time last year. So last year she was doing full time for thirty five thousand. We were hoping to readdress with an appropriate increase for twenty twenty four. Oh, it's seventeen and a half and seventeen and a half. I right. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you. Any further discussion, ladies and gentlemen? In is that office closed one day a week? Yes, we we allow um, Miss Kalish to work from home on that that on when uh, no I forget the day a week. Okay. I think it's Wednesdays. Um, that's when she usually um, takes the private time. She's always accessible. However, and she does answer residents' emails. Um, she's just not obviously the phone. She does check her messages. She follows up. That gives her her private time where people aren't interrupting her day constantly. Again, it's like the clerk's office, high miles, you know, high volume of people coming in. You know, Mr. DeSanta can, you know, attest to that. That gives her time to catch up on um, the minutes from the, you know, the several different meetings she, she administers during the month. So yes, we do accommodate her in that way. And yes, to your, to your question. I think it's Wednesdays, I forget. It's I believe you're correct. Yeah. Mr. President, yes. if I may. Yes, um, Grace is probably another hard worker that we have. She's brought up the planning board minutes and the zoning board minutes when they were like years behind. She always has the updated paperwork when you sit on a planning board. Um, I have never experienced um, not having the proper information when, when Grace is there. So um, I just want to throw that out there. She's an exceptionally hard worker. Thank if you, I, uh, Council President. Sorry, Councilman Sears. Council President, if I could just piggyback on that. When I first came in, as, as we moved in finishing 22 and starting and completing 23, um, she always brought several, brought several initiatives to my office of telling me how things need to be improved and worked towards it with another employee. We created cheat sheets for the residents, um, you know, reorganized the whole process of how people go through the system and informing them, you know, shows, shows tremendous amount of initiative and doesn't just bring the problem, brings the problem and the solution. You know, fan, fantastic employee. And again, another one that deals with very unhappy customers that have their own timeline in their, in their mind, which I can totally 
understand, you know, everybody thinks they're going to get their permits the next day. And unfortunately, all those complaints fall on Miss Kalish and she has tremendous customer service. Uh, I can hear it firsthand because her office is right next to mine. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Any other discussion? When we bought the minutes current, was that outsourced? was for some of it i guess it was it was so far behind and i think we adjusted the line <clears throat> this year to account for the fact that um it's back solely on uh, miss kalish's desk for responsibility yeah as you've seen mike she has the meetings from a minute from the prior meeting available for the next one for approval i understand yeah. i just yeah. and not to take away any of the no. effort she's making but I recall last year there was, I believe it was last year, the discussion of outsourcing the minutes to catch them up. So, you know, not to take away that she's not keeping them current, but uh, there was a separate effort to mm. pick up the backlog. Yes, yes, that's uh, absolutely but, correct. Yeah, but however, she had to work with that person um, to get them done. So it's not like she just passed off the whole thing. It requires no. a little bit of coordination between them. They have to come back. They have to yeah. be Re presented. Yeah. They yeah. Have, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and in addition, but we're not asking for that in this budget, correct? No, we're not. No. But just no. to further explain, Mr. Olman's, uh, you know, question. We didn't make grace full time until the council approved mm -hmm. the money for it. Which, correct. You know, by that time was. You know, almost probably May, June, you know, before we had the money for yes, it. So, now that you say it, I recall that. So, and it wasn't very much money. I think I forget what line it is, but I think it'll it'll come to us when we get there. But we're not asking for that this year. No, no. no. Okay. Any other discussion? Before you vote, you're voting on those two lines. Then we're voting on one one zero first, and then we'll flip the page okay. to. Um, so a separate to, motion will be on that. Yes, line? we'll do a separate. Okay. This is two separate line items. So I want to keep it separate. Just the. The basis for the increase is is really what? market and length of service. And what is the length of service? Uh, four years. In the notes, that she's a four-year employee <coughs> on the budget. She says that. Right. Yeah. Only coming full time last year at a certain point? Yes, sir. Yes. June of last year, right? That sounds about correct, yes. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Roll call. Councilman Cassio? No. Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Councilwoman Velez? Yes. Council President Tisano? Yes. Flip the page to um, 21. 21. It is, um, oh, did you want it to? 401211851110. 20,000 requested, 20,000 recommended. Do I have a motion? There's another line for. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yes. Well, let's, let me finish it's, this oh, one. Oh, 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 so. yeah. What's that? She's on both. It's so. What do you mean she's on both? Secretary meeting. Secretary and both. So, yeah. Okay, so let me, let me, let's get through yeah. this line. And then. I'm sorry, motion with by Mr. Sears and Ms. or Ms. Velez and Mr. Sears or no? No. Yeah. Did anybody motion yet on this? Yeah, I think uh, Mr. Yeah, Sears. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I'm sorry, okay. Councilman I'm sorry. Sears, you motion and Councilman Velez, you second or vice versa? Vice versa. I'm sorry. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call. Councilman Cassio? No. <clears throat> Councilman Sears? Yes. Councilman Ullman? Yes. Councilwoman Velez? Yes. Council President DeSena? Yes. Zoning Board Secretary Meeting Fees 40121-185-140. requested, 1700 recommended. Do I have a motion? Oops. So moved. No second. Mr. Cassio and Mr. Sears? Thank you. 13 meetings at $125 per meeting. Do I have any discussion? Roll call? It, well, oh, I'm sorry. I do have a question. So for the other, for the council, for instance, is, are the meetings baked into the salary? No. 
Yes, unless they're over. Oh, the, for the clerk or yeah. for this, this individual? No, for the clerk. Oh, the, the clerk. Yes, it is. Up to a certain point. Me. Yeah. Right. So yes, yes. The, except if it's over the clerk gets extra right. Mm -hmm. And that is it's in time. So you are required, as part of your job, to attend twenty-one or twenty-two meetings, mm -hmm. and after twenty-two, you're compensated separately. Are up you up to up to ten? Up to ten. Maximum of ten. Ten extra. Yes. Okay. And are you and the zoning and planning the only? Are those the only extra meetings? Are the are those the only roles that have meeting responsibilities? The, 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 the health right. also that we the just approved. Right, we did, and then we have those court sessions with that separate. So, is there a reason why we? compensate them differently because if they don't have the meetings in the months they don't get paid right this is so a like they don't have like year. they don't have like a july and august meeting like zoning board sometimes goes months or planning board Same goes months time. without a meeting mm -hmm. so once they're canceled they don't get paid for those meetings correct i right. believe that's correct yeah so it saves the town money yes so she'll only get paid those meetings that she attends if there's no meeting there's no stipend right is right. that correct, Mr. Carl? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you see 13 meetings because that's the max they can have in one year, you know, unless they go to special meetings for any reason or big application. But okay. Roll call. Councilman Gassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Councilwoman Velez. Yes. Council President DeSena. Yes. On the previous page, planning department secretary meeting fees, 401-21-180-120. It is 3,000 requested, 3,000 recommended. $125 per meeting. Why is that so I high? think it's 25 meetings, right? Isn't there two a month? And well, then plus the reward? Yes. You have to be reversed. I think planning is what, once and zoning is twice? No, zoning is only once. Planning is twice. Okay. Planning is twice. Planning is twice. I'm sorry. Any discussion? No apologies. Roll call. I have a motion. I thought we made. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. Motion. 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 <laughs> it's nine forty-five. It's getting late. Second. Second. Also, roll call. Councilman Cassio. Yes. Councilman Sears. Yes. Councilman Ullman. Yes. Councilman Velez. Yes. Council President Desena. Yes. yes. Motion to. Um, I lost my sheet. Resolution number 24-212, Personnel Various Departments Employees, motion to enter into closed session. Do I have a motion? So Second. I'll second it. All in my, favor? My, I'm sorry, I have a comment before you take the vote. Um, an employee asked me today um, if the council has made an accommodation for the clerk position uh, since that position is enclosed. Um, but yet the clerk needs to be here to take minutes. I think that's the way it's always been done. I, I'm just saying an employee asked me about it and felt that it was an unfair advantage. Well, she has the right to either public or close, so she's going to be right. But, but it's not fair for her to be listening to what the council is saying, like everyone else, if they opt for closed. But they could be here for closed. No, they can't. Oh, they can't. No. Oh. All right, then Mrs. Wachowski will have to step outside and I'll take minutes. I'll take okay. minutes. Just want to paper? make sure. I got paper here. You want to do me first or you want to do me last? We'll do you first. So we can, but let's get to close first. We didn't get okay. all in favor. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Let's give Ricky a couple minutes to. President, may I make one statement before we go into close? Sure, Mr. Sears. Um, I, I have a text message from ex councilman Stacy Feeney who is adding an extra 200 to my 500 for the um, um, information on the oh, thank you. culprits. So it's now a $700 reward. Thank you, Mrs. Feeney. Thank you, Council President. So we're gonna just go into close. If you're not, we're not, we are not coming back from close. So um, 
Ricky will come down and turn off the uh, TV uh, and microphone. Uh, you're not going to vote on it. You'll vote on them next we'll meeting. We'll vote on them next meeting. Yes, gotcha. we'll discuss them now and then gotcha. vote on them at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So let's wait for Ricky to.